Can you guys see me already? All right, let's see if any, uh, uh, let me know if you could see me in the chat stream. Okay, somebody said back to the future for the for the win, Mr. Mark Chuck. Thanks, man. So that means you are watching me live. And this is, of course, the DeLorean. And uh, it's my favorite car in the entire world. And uh, stick around because at the end, you will be able to win this, this car right here. Um, not a life-sized one, but this is a 118th scale. And you, you got to check this out. Watch. Bam. The gold wings come up. Look at that. Oh, and check out the wheels. Yes. So you guys will be able to win one of those at the end. And, of course, we have a lot of other giveaways for the agenda. This is what, it gonna, what it's going to look like. First, I just want to say thank you. You guys rock. If you want to sh share, you can just simply share on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Point people to letgoday.com. Secondly, if you are able to have a username uh, instead of uh, – there's a lot of people who are named um, – Ustreamer91792 says, Happy Let Go Day, Pat. It's a lot easier to say your name. Now, I'll, uh, let me just test to see if you can hear me. I still have a few people who are saying they can't. So uh, let's, um, my favorite episode, or my favorite Back to the Future was actually part two. Let me see if anybody says that or reacts to that. Anybody just mentioned th that part two? Okay. Sweet, I got uh, Dorchy and Inc. and Alex and Dr. Beck Barker and uh, Molly. Um, awesome, you guys, you guys rock. Okay, so this is how it's going to work. First, we're going to do a little bit of Q&A just to sort of get to know each other. I'm going to ask you some questions first because I want to find out where you're from and things like that. Secondly, I'm going to have a guest come on at the half hour, a special guest who's going to talk a little bit about his experience with letting go. Then we're going to do some giveaways. we got some funny videos to show you, um, and we're just going to have a good time. So thank you guys again. This is the first time I've ever done a live broadcast like this. There's like, I don't even know how many people. Let me see. There are like 500 people or 450 right now, which is awesome. You guys are totally awesome. So first thing I want to do is ask you a question. I want to see where you guys are from. Uh, um, so just put in your location right now. So I want to see uh, I want to see where you guys are from. It's hard because there's a lot of people in here so it's going to go by really fast. Princeton, New Jersey. Sam, what's up Sam? England, uh, New Hampshire, oh gosh, Finland, Missouri, Memphis, uh, Missouri, Boston, Denver, Czech Republic, Connecticut, SoCal, what's Netherlands, Florida. This is crazy. There are so many awesome people in here. Phoenix, Morocco, or Morocco. Dude, that's awesome. You gotta tell me about that. Uh, L.A., San Fran, Kenya. Oh, dude, who is from Kenya? Oh, that's too crazy right now. Germany, Armenia, St. Louis. Hey, I'm headed there in October. Uh, Mare Mesa, really, that's where I'm from. Uh, bad Internet, that's where we're all from, I think. Uh, San Francisco, Bay Area, Israel, West Philly, Germany, Paris, France, Neptune, California, Mexico, Singapore, Romania, Cairo, the moon. Dr. Barker says he's from the moon, or she's from the moon. I don't believe you. Um, there would be far too much of a delay between me asking you that question and you being able to pro provide that answer. So Spain, Sweden, we'll do this for a few more seconds. Minnesota, Belgium, the future. Yes, good answer. Um, audio is getting weird. Hmm. Provo, Utah. I think that's where Bluehost is from, actually. Hungary, Israel, Uranus. No, come on, guys. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So thank you guys so much. Um, so what I want to do now, um, and there's still going to be a lot of people saying where they're from. Greenville, South Carolina, Wonderland, Seattle, Kingston, Jamaica, Sean Kingston, um, Columbia, Bad Lag, Bulgaria. Never heard of Bad, bad Lag before, but uh, Red Deer, Alberta. I could just do this forever, so I'm going to stop because we're already at two, uh, 12.08 or eight minutes past the hour. So I want you guys, if you have any questions for me, we'll just kind of chat a little bit before we get to our first guest. Maybe even before then, we'll do a little bit of a giveaway. Um, and again, if you wanted to share this, just share it on Twitter at Pat Flynn is my username. And also just point people to letgoday.com. So uh, just ask a bunch of questions. I'm going to hold. I mean, there's no way. Uh, there's absolutely no way I could get to, uh, to all of them. Um, uh, Springfield, Nigeria. That's so cool. This is a, this is a worldwide event. Um, if you have any questions for me, what color are my socks? They are actually 
I'll show you. There was a there was a running joke for those of you who are sort of new to my brand. And one time a long time ago, I said that I had this thing where I always had to be wearing socks when I'm doing testing or on a live stream. And uh, my sock color is is gray. Just don't mind the hairs on there. Um, and it's a sock by Lululemon, which is like the most comfortable sock in the world, I think. Okay. Chai Town in the house. All right. Any more questions? That was a great first question, um, you know, about my socks. Can you give a shout out to Crowd Cases? What up, Crowd Cases? Perfect timing on your on your message because I saw it. Am I a big fan of hip hop? I am a big fan of hip hop. Um, I am. Totally. Uh, what microphone are you using? I'm using an Audio Technica. Let's see, can I find it? The case here. It is an Audio Technica. Oh gosh, I don't know the number, but it's it's actually it's a lapel mic. You can see it right here. And uh, I up I used to have a wireless one, and I still have that, and it's great for public speaking events. And I used to use that for things like this, but I recently got a a wired lapel mic. Audio Technica is about two hundred bucks. Um, I'll try to find the number. I can't. Oh, AT8537. Whatever that means. AT8537. And it, uh, hopefully, I guess it sounds good. Um, next question. Liz Brazier. How different are you feeling today than you felt this time five years ago? Um, this time, probably an hour from now. Um, well, exactly five years ago. Uh, I went into the office at around 1 p.m., so there's still like 50 minutes to them. At this time, I was just nervous because people were getting called into the back office. I didn't know what was going to happen, um, and I always just had this little feeling that maybe I was going to get called in. And then an hour from now, I was called into the office, and that's when everything changed. Of course, as you know, if you picked up Let Go, you've heard all the stories and the emotions going through my head. I was angry. I was disappointed. I was upset. Um, I was upset at myself. I was worried, confused. Um, never did I feel happy, and never did I think that five years from now I would celebrate that. Um, but, you know, like I said, it, it turned out to be a huge blessing in disguise. Uh, Ra uh, Raphael asks, is Let Go D going to be a yearly thing? I think so. I mean, this is, a, this is an experiment that my team and I put together, um, and I'll give them a shout-out in just a second because they're all amazing. Uh, but this is a little experiment just to see sort of what kind of thing we could do or what kind of movement we can make with this um who knows i mean we even threw around the idea of making it like a live event at one point which would be pretty awesome uh, sort of almost like a world domination summit type thing with uh with with chris big question how do you rank a youtube video at number one in google this is by you streamer 632703 cool so we're going to get into some technical questions i guess and i don't mind technical questions because i love to answer technical questions um as far as getting a video to rank number one in Google, obviously it depends on the competition for that keyword. And, um, you know, so there is a keyword tool actually specific for YouTube, which is pretty awesome. I have actually haven't explored that on my blog yet um, for everybody. Um, but, you know, checking out the competition on that, the competition is probably rel uh, same or relative to how it is in Google. So you can check out the Google AdWords keyword tool as well to see competition. And really, you just want to have awesome content that people link to you. Um, there, are, there are people who sort of link build, and, and, and I know Glenn Alsop from ViperChill.com did a, did a bunch of recent case studies for really high-ranking videos in very competitive markets that are still using those like spammy backlinks, and, and on YouTube apparently that's still working, so I guess Google will eventually trickle down some of that sort of uh, panda penguin sort of feelings onto, onto YouTube soon. But that, that, you know, good content, getting people to link to it, that, that's pretty much how you do it. Uh, let's see. How long did it take you to make your first dollar online? This is from Truth Williams. Uh, Truth Williams. Thank you for the question, Truth. How long did it take me to get my first dollar? Well, I guess when you consider that I started GreenExamAcademy.com, that was a site that I earned my first dollar on. Um, I started that in 2007, actually, and it wasn't for the purpose of making money. It was for the purpose of keeping track of notes that were coming to my blog, or that notes for an exam uh, that, that I posted on this blog. And when I discovered that I had all this traffic coming in, that was a, you know, over a year after I started it and put content into it, studied for the exam, and passed it. Uh, and then at the point at which I knew all that traffic was coming to greenexamacademy.com, it really took about, let's see, three or four weeks, I would say, um, when I discovered Google AdSense and started reading all about it. And I put Google AdSense on the site, and I made my very first $1.08. 
And uh, that's when it all started. That, that gave me the motivation. And, yeah, I could find that change in my car, like underneath the chairs and stuff. But, you know, really, you got you to gotta really celebrate those small wins. And I think that's a lot of what Let Go is about, you know, when you kind of grow through these dramatic changes in life. Um, you got to sort of notice the, the cool little fun little things that happen along the way, the small things, because it, it, it will push you forward and, and, and keep you going. Um, and I'm sorry, again, I can't get to everyone's single uh, question. Um, let's see. This is a good question, I think. Hey, Pat, would you? Oh, man. <laughs> sorry. I don't, this is like crazy. Sorry if I was about to ask your question because it's gone now and the, the stream just keeps going. Uh, let's see, 12.15. Yeah, we got time for plenty more questions. Um, do you think beat procrastination is a good niche? Uh, I think so. A lot of people struggle with it. Um, but the, the trick with procrastination is, is trying to get people that to, trying to get people to admit or understand that that's what they're doing. A lot of people don't even realize they're procrastinating, and it takes a lot of different forms. Um, you know, it is definitely one of the forms of resistance, as mentioned in Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. So I definitely check that out, and, and that's a lot. That has a lot to do with procrastination, and there's a lot of these get things done, uh, getting things done type type courses and books, and and so yeah, I, d I definitely think procrastination is a good niche to get into, but the issues or the sort of challenges are getting people to understand that they're procrastinating and to get those people to purchase something or to ch to make a change in their lifestyle because really that's what procrastination and solving procrastination is all about is making those lifestyle changes that are going to help promote productivity and help keep you moving forward and that that's not something that can really happen overnight i mean there are certain things and tricks you could do and, and programs you can get like the pomodoro technique and things like that but first it, it all starts with the mind and i think you know, going back to let go, that, that's really what the focus of the book is. I mean, I did a lot of different things, but it was about the mindset and the struggle along the way. So if you can tap into that struggle and the mindset of people who are procrastinating, um, uh, maybe there's certain tests that they can do to understand that they're procrastinating. I don't know, but you need to get them to understand the procrastinating first, obviously. Next, do you know how many podcast listeners are women? This is from Best Mom Products. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but I know there, you know, there's a, I, I, I wouldn't even know how to check that, actually. Um, but I'm sure it's, you know, fairly equal men and women. Uh, I think maybe a little bit more men just because this came from, you know, podcasting came, you know, almost a decade ago from the sort of really geeky, techy world. Um, and, and, and now it's sort of going mainstream. So as far as listeners, I mean, it probably depends on which show you're speaking of, too. But overall, generally, you know, I, I wish iTunes would tell me, but they're very bad at sort of giving data on, on podcasting. I mean, it's terrible. I don't even know how many people listen to the show from iTunes. I have to use a third-party program to do that. Let's see. A uh, question from Mrs. Relationship Stuff. There are so many branches to smart passive income, ebooks, niche sites, podcasting, etc. Which one should I focus on first? Well, I think the answer to that kind of stems from what issue or problem or pain are you trying to solve? And who is your target audience? I think those are the most important questions. First, before you even sort, sort of determine how to solve a problem, you need to understand who has a problem, what that problem is, really get deep into it. And oftentimes, when you get that deep into a problem uh, and, and, and actually speak to people like face-to-face, -face, uh, like get offline and understand people's issues, um, they're going to sort of almost mold what that product is going to be for you. And so that could be a book, it could be a course, it could be podcasting. It depends on those people and, and sort of how they like to consume content. But it all stems down to the pains and problems and issues that, that people are having and how to sort of really understand what would work for them. Uh, I recommend listening to podcast number, SPI podcast session number 46 with Dane Maxwell. Uh, have, I was going to say raise your hand, but how many of you have listened to that episode, Dane Maxwell episode number 46? I just want to see if you, if, if for me, uh, people tell me that that's one of their favorite episodes. Was it one of yours? Let's see. I got a bunch of me's. Uh, three, two, seven, eight, seven, six. Uh, Katie Davis. Hey, what's up, Katie? Katie is awesome. She's an author for children's books. Um, I posted a video on Facebook a couple weeks ago um, of my son actually reading, like, the letters in her book, um, uh, Little Chicken's Big Day. It's a great book. Pick it up for your kids. Um, awesome. Uh, great. Yeah, a lot of people are putting on, saying they're putting Dane Maxwell at episode 46 on their list. A lot of people have loved it. Um, loved his video on Mixergy as well. Yes, Dane had a great interview on Mixergy as well. So definitely check it out. Um, sing us a quick tune. 
Wow. Any, any requests for, as, as you, a lot of you know who listen to my podcast, I've been doing a lot more singing lately. And I think it's because I was inspired by the movie Pitch Perfect. And uh, I like to pretend I'm in an acapella group, even though I'm just by myself. But let's see. Oh, okay. We could do, uh, I have a request for my school's fight song. So uh, we'll just do one verse of it. So it goes. <clears throat> Gosh, I'm gonna I'm gonna screw this up and everyone's gonna laugh at me. And I'm like a huge cow fan, and so I, I'm like, okay, anyway. Our sturdy golden bear is watching from the sky, looks down upon his collars fair and guards us from his lair. Our banner gold and blue, and symbol on it too. What's it mean? Means fight for California, for California through and through. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you for that. Um, there's a couple Bruins fans. You guys are cool. You know, I, I'm okay with uh, with UCLA. There's just another sort of college in LA that that I like a little bit less than other schools. But I'm not even going to get into that. Um, <laughs> someone's asking to play the trumpet, so I'm actually going. I have it. Um, it might blow your ears out, but we'll see. Um, I got a lot of people asking. Four or five people actually asking, who is your inspirational guru? Um, that's a great question. You know, who inspires me? I mean, there's a lot of people out there. Uh, Seth Godin, Malcolm Gladwell. Um, and, and, and there's really people who I mentioned in the book that I've really, you know, I, I really give credit to sort of where, I uh, where I'm at today. And, and those two people uh, are, are Jason Van Orden and Jeremy Franson from Internet Business Mastery. Um, if you guys are watching, again, I just can't credit you enough for, for what you've done for me to really, you know, yeah, you, you guys have great strategies and, 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 and good courses and, and tips and an amazing podcast, of course. Um, but I really think it, it was your focus on the mindset of doing business that really changed everything for me because no one else was talking about that and you guys were. And I know in your course, that's the first module, you know, discovering sort of what your uh, definite major purposes are and, and, and really thinking about why you're doing what you're doing. And that really got me off on the right foot. So. Thank you, Jeremy and Jason from Internet Business Mastery. Um, let's see. IBM rocks. Totally. Uh, was your wife supportive in the beginning, or did she want you to get a regular job? Uh, this is from Balili. Uh, great question. Actually, you'll see in the book uh, an interview with my wife um, about just that. And actually, she was always very supportive. She actually told me, you know, everything's going to be okay. This was the same day I got laid off, and that really, truly changed everything. You know, I can't stress enough how important it is to have that sort of support group and, and, and a partner who, who at least understands a little bit of, uh, and, and is a little bit supportive of, of what you do. Because um, if she had just said, I want you to get a regular job, um, that's not what she sounds like. That was actually a very bad impression. But she, I, would, I would probably go get a regular job, you know, because I would just want to make sure everything was, was happy. And um, she really believed in me, and, and that was extremely helpful. Let's see. How is your wife and kids? Are you planning to have more? This is from Ben Jones. Wow, we're getting personal. Uh, they're doing awesome. My daughter is nine months old. My son is three and a half. And my daughter is starting to pull herself up and crawl, which like kind of sucks now because we can't put her in one spot and know she's going to be there like when we come back. Um, so we have to always watch her. Um, and a lot of the parents out there know what I'm talking about. It's just it's over now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, as, as far as having more... Um, see, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. I feel like now would be a good time to give away a prize. How about that? Um, at the end of the show, near the end of the show, I'm going to be giving away prizes um, to those of you who share your let go story. So if you go to smartpassiveincome.com, this is for one of the contests happening later on. If you go to, if you go to smartpassiveincome.com, um, there is a brand new post right at the top that talks about Let Go Day and celebrating today. Um, if you leave a comment in that post sharing a moment in your life when you went, you underwent, uh, you went through a change that that.
Are you filming this? <laughs> Hey, it's Pat here. I just wanted to let you know that Let Go is now available on iPad and iPhone through the brand new Snippet app. To celebrate, I thought I'd share some bloopers from putting it together. Enjoy. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. What's up? Uh, did everyone see that video or no? So, okay. So, you guys just saw, I guess, my team telling me uh, some bloopers. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed those. There's a lot more coming later in the stream today. Sorry I left. Uh, I just had to let go for a sec. And, um, yeah, that's a bad joke. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, prizes. So, go to smartpassiveincome.com and check out uh, that latest post and leave sort of your, your let go story there. And I'm going to uh, – Matt, my producer, he's going to go in there and uh, – slash project manager Matt Gartland from winningedits.com. Amazing. Uh, if you go to smartpassive.com, leave your story there. He's going to pull out a few of the more notable stories. And I have one story to share with you now. Um, and, and this is a story from Deborah Richmond. Deborah, um, what you can do is private message. You'll see in the chat stream there's, um, there's moderators. There's MWG, which is uh, Matt's, um, Matt's private but, uh, or Matt's, Matt's username, message him because I want to give you a $20 gift card uh, to Amazon for sharing an amazing story on the blog. So this is the first one. This is, this is from Deborah. She says, four years ago, I was laid off from the marketing department of an insurance company. I decided to start my own online marketing business. I now work with several clients, plus have a membership site, so no one person can ever take that uh, can ever take away my income so quickly ever again. I let go of the idea of traditional employment and started my own. I'm watching you closely, Pat, and I'm learning so much. Um, I will be working with new site tools so I can develop another stream of income and add to the mix. Awesome. Thank you, Deborah. Congratulations on winning the $20 gift card. We have more gift cards to give away um, and, and also this bad boy right here. Um, okay. Uh, where do you post the comment? Go to smartpassiveincome.com and leave a comment on the latest post. So apparently, uh, hey, team members, there's like a spammer in here. Um, so just make sure that that person is booted. Um, 971854 is spamming. Uh, I guess he just really wants me to answer the question, and I'm sorry. I can't answer somebody's question who keeps asking it over and over and over again. I'm sorry, um, but I appreciate your enthusiasm. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so we're, we're a few minutes away from having our first guest on. Um, until then, actually, why don't we give away another gift card? This will be a $20 gift card to iTunes. And again, we're celebrating Let Go Day for those of you who just came on um, the day five years ago when I was let go from my architectural position. And we're celebrating it because it changed my life. And, uh, you know, good things can happen when things may not seem so good, um, like getting let go. So let's give away a $20 gift card to iTunes. And what I want you to do is, you know, in the book Let Go, there are a lot of quotes. At the beginning of every chapter, there, there's, a, there's a number of different quotes. One of my favorite ones from Mike Tyson, which is, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face or punched in the mouth. And uh, it, it, I, it punched in the mouth, yeah. And, um, you know, I love quotes. So what I want you to do is share your favorite quote um, here in the chat stream. And what we're going to do is going to select one, um, mostly at random just because of the, how crazy it's going to be. But I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to find one and read one off. And uh, we'll, we'll make sure to, to break it down. Um, the guest, uh, this is for Mindy, who, who, who's sort of moderating this uh, on the other side. She's also on my team. She's awesome. Um, I got a message from the next guest saying, rebooting computer now, so it should be on right at the start. So share your favorite quote, and I'm going to pull one out. Um, I love quotes. They're really inspirational, really quick sort of boosts of, of inspiration throughout the day when I, whenever I'm feeling, you know, just sort of drab or whatever. Um, so, it's, oh, wow, these are there's a lot of awesome quotes. I recommend uh, you all to just look through these um, at one point. Um, so let's see. Break dance, please. That's not a quote. Mihaul, I know you. Let's see. Um, okay. How am I going to do this? This is crazy. Okay. I'm just going to pull out. 
All right. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, this this is a quote from you, streamer. So you don't even you don't you don't even have a username, but I'm still awarding you the iTunes gift card. So I already gave away that it's not someone who has a um, who has a username. So sorry, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But this is from you, streamer eight nine five four nine nine, and this person said, "I don't know the key to success, comma, but the key to failure is trying to please everyone." Bill Cosby. So congratulations, you streamer 895499. Please private message Matt, who's one of the moderators, MWG142, and he will sort of get your information so I can send you that $20 iTunes gift card. Um, so yeah, awesome. Congratulations. And there's just so many good quotes here. Um, so yeah, but I love that quote because it's true. If you try to please everyone, um, you're not going to please anyone or you're not going to please anyone as much as you could if you just focus on a specific sort of group of people and, and really trying to serve them so i think i have mindy oh no she left mindy are you there i, I can hear mindy she, she, she's okay so our next guest is ready to go um am i going to be able to see him or are we just going to chat okay so everybody out there uh... <sighs> It was this meeting that I had had here that day uh, that that it would be such a pivotal poem. Uh, <laughs> pivotal. <laughs> what does that mean? I had I had no idea that that this meeting that I was having here uh, was was actually going to be a pivotal. <laughs> Jesus. More coffee. I had I had no idea that the meeting that I was having here that day was going to be such a pivotal. <laughs> oh my God. What is wrong with me? Why is this so hard right now? <laughs> so it was about halfway through dinner when... <laughs> That's a good outtake. <laughs> it's more like, what's the next step? What can we do? <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Be working a lot and sorry. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this is the hardest like filming ever. Um, yeah. Poor editing. Kaoni, you have to stay out of the camera line, okay? Go both over there behind Uncle Caleb. Watch what Uncle Caleb does, okay? Can you wave? Whoa, you see that? Kaoni, do you want to be like this on TV? Like this? Ciao. Oh, you just have it at Ciao. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, really? Is there anything you want to say, Keone? Oh, really? To your all your fans that heard you on the podcast. What do you want to say to everybody? Da. What does that mean? Cannon. Over there. <laughs> Cannon. Over there. <that. laughs> Stop. This is like Daddy's podcast. Remember how you used to say hi, everybody. In, in my podcast? Do you remember what? Do you remember on my microphone? Do you like Cars, Keone? Yeah. Who's your favorite Cars character? Lightning. Lightning what? Lightning the Queen. Lightning the Queen. If you want to, because when you hung up on me, you might have to call him back in because when you hung up on me, the video is still on, but it wasn't working, so. Is Lewis's video on or just audio for now? No. Okay. You want me to call hey, back up? in? Um, Mindy, should he call back in or? Let me call okay. back in. Hang on, guys. So I guess you watching the blooper videos. Someone commented. Oh, Mater, I thought, Mater, this is like crazy. I <laughs> can't. <laughs> you know, face your fears and conquer them and dominate. Dominate. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can stick around. Boom! Flinspired. <laughs> hey, it's Pat here. 
I just wanted to let you know that Let Go is now available on iPad and iPhone through the brand new Snippet app. To celebrate, I thought I'd share some bloopers from putting it together. Enjoy. Blah, blah, blah. It was this meeting that I had had here that day uh, that that it would be such a pivotal poem. Uh, <laughs> pivotal. What does that mean? All right. Can you guys hear me okay? And can you see a picture of Lewis? For some reason, the video adding the video of Lewis is screwing things up. Um, thank you guys for dealing with this. I know it's pretty confusing. Just uh, and, and it might be crazy, but okay. Awesome, Tim. Varsity Charm, Skip Foster, all you guys. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So I'm very happy to welcome my guest, Lewis Howes, on the show. A lot of you have heard him on the SPI podcast before, twice actually. And I really wanted to bring him on because he has an amazing story that I think we should all be reminded of. Um, of, of uh, it's about letting go. So, Lewis, welcome to the uh, Let Go Day chat and stream. Thanks, my man. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, let me know if you can hear Lewis in the stream. So, uh, tell him Fuaza says hi. Fuaza says hi. Okay, awesome. Everyone hears you. So, right. Lewis, dude, thank you, thank you for coming on. Um, you have an amazing story. You, you had worked your whole life initially to, to work for something uh, in, in sports, and then it just didn't work out. Can, can you sort of give us sort of a rundown of, of, of sort of what happened and, and, and sort of what were you working toward and, and what happened and how you felt? Yeah, you know, my whole life, my dream was to be a pro athlete. And I was blessed to have achieved that goal on a, a smaller scale. I played arena football, but early in my career, my rookie season, I broke my wrist, which forced me to end my my dream of being a professional athlete. And it was uh, extremely depressing, extremely uh, frustrating. I had a lot of resentment, a lot of anger, because everything I had worked for for 20 years was now over. And I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't have a college degree. And it was extremely stressful, a lot of anxiety, just trying to figure out what my purpose was, what I was going to do next, and more importantly, how I was going to go about figuring out what I wanted to do. So I had a big lesson in letting go of a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings, a lot of frustration, pain, a lot of fear, everything under the sun. I was feeling it for about a year and a half. And I wasn't sure what to do next. Wow. So a whole year and a half. Well, there was no way that, that you could recover from your injury and then get back into it? You know, that's what I was, you know, being a, being a stubborn athlete at the time, that's what I thought I was going to do. I was like, I'm going to recover in a couple months. I'm going to come back and I'm going to be playing again. And for whatever reason, you know, the world sometimes works in mysterious ways. I, uh, the break was so interesting, so weird on my wrist when I broke my wrist that they had to take a bone out of my hip and put it in my wrist to kind of help mend what? and heal it better. So it took six months for me to in a full in a full arm cast, and then I was like, okay, once I'm done with the cast, I'll be recovered pretty quickly afterwards. But it took another just to be able to straighten my arm out 100% of the way and not feel pain from in my elbow from being the cast. So I was out for, and then I had to, I got out of shape. I was like 20 pounds heavier. So it was, uh, everything led me away from playing again. The actual, the arena football league that I was playing in folded the year I recovered. So I couldn't play that year anyway. So it was like, I had two years of missing football and it was like, someone was telling me I'm not supposed to play anymore and I'm supposed to be doing something else. So I kind of just went with that feeling and here I am. So you had that feeling of something telling you you needed to do something else. How did you discover what that was? I mean, your, I think, your whole uh, life changed and your path yeah. got sort of redirected. I, How did you know where to go? You know, I was, uh, I think I always seek out um, people who achieve excellence. I, I want to be around them. I want to learn from them. I want to be inspired by them. So at the time, I was reaching out to various people, previous mentors, new mentors I wanted to have, people that I just thought were inspiring. I just thought everything they were doing was really cool, was interesting, was motivating for me, and I wanted to learn how they did it. So I started to connect with these powerful leaders in my community uh, and meet with them once a week, once a month. I started to work for them and just learn from them and shadow them. 
And that was one of the greatest experiences of my, I guess, business career was for a year getting mentored by some amazing individuals and learning so much more from them that I ever could from school or working for someone like a job or something like that just to make money, but really having a mentor to guide me on what I wanted to do, how I wanted to achieve greatness. That was the, that was the key. Yeah, I think that's a very important point and, and something that is, you know, shared in my story too. And not really a direct mentor, one specific person that I could always go to, but I had, you know, a community, a group of people that I found through, um, you know, an online course that I was in. And, and that was tremendously helpful. Your mentor, you know, how did he steer you in the right direction? What do you remember any specific advice he gave you or maybe just one sort of thing that just clicked for you when things started finally happen? Yeah, you know, I had a, a couple of different mentors and they all served amazing purposes in my life. Um, but a couple of one of them would whenever I would ask him a question, I would always come to him with a, a bunch of different questions and ideas and thoughts. And whenever I would ask him a question, he would answer with a story or another question to me. And it was always like I never got the answer I wanted, but he wanted me to like seek it out and just learn about different experiences that have happened to different people and find my own answer. So he made me, really made me look from within and be like, okay, and challenged me a lot. Uh, another one was just a genius and always had such valuable things to say. So he always gave me the answers that he used, and then I applied it to what I wanted. So again, I think you've got to be willing to seek it out yourself and really be open and learning new experiences, new lessons from, from people, uh, especially your mentors. Mm -hmm. Now, along the way, um, you know, I, I experienced this, you know, I, I had some direction and then along the way I would, I would start to doubt myself. I would start to wonder if this was actually what I should be doing or if, it, if I was even cut out for it. Did you ever feel yes. that way? And how, and how did you sort of deal with that? Man, when you are sleeping on your sister's couch for a year and a half and you're in three credit cards and debt and school loan debt and you have no college degree and no job and you're doing the same thing for a year and a half and you're not getting any results, I started to doubt myself a little bit and be a little frustrated. Um, but I knew what I didn't want. I knew like in my soul what I did not want and that was – to work a job where I was building someone else's dreams. So I knew that I wanted to work for myself. I just didn't know how to do it yet. I didn't know how to make money yet. I didn't know anything about business. And I was just determined to figure out a way by surrounding myself with the best people, by learning whatever I needed to learn, by connecting with whoever I needed to connect with, that I was going to figure out what my unique skills and talents were and how I could apply it to building a business or making money and by no means am I talented or you know intelligent in a lot of areas of business but I figured out kind of a few of the key talents that I do bring to the table and I've just been focusing on maximizing those talents as much as possible and not focusing on the stuff that stresses me out or worrying about those things that I don't know Instead, I'm just either hiring those people or attracting those people to support me in those areas so that I can focus on exactly where my talents lie. Love it, dude. I love it. I love it. Now, you <laughs> are back in the athletic realm doing some stuff. How did, how, how did that how, What are you doing sort of athletic, athletically now, which I think is awesome because that's sort of what you came away from. Um, what are you doing and, and, and how did you get into that really quick? You know – there's no point in going about our lives if we're not doing exactly what inspires us and moves us every single day and where our passion is able to come out. If we're just going around every day and staying comfortable and doing things that we think we're supposed to be doing and that our friends and family think we should be doing, then we're not maximizing our lives. It's my So I'm always looking for ways to challenge myself and to go chase my dreams and actually put it into action. For me, as a child, I always wanted to be an Olympic athlete. I just wanted to go big and compete and wear the USA across my chest and experience that two-week experience in the Summer Olympics because it was just always the most inspiring time every four years that I watched it. It was just like it uplifted me and inspired me. It moved me. 
And that's what I want to feel. I want to experience that. So for me, I, uh, two years ago, I, I moved to New York City and picked up a new sport called team handball. And it's an Olympic sport. It's basically, visualize it, it's basically water polo played on a basketball court where you can dribble, you pass, and you shoot into a net when there's a goalie. And so I moved to New York and, and picked it up the sports that are practicing with the team in New York and then made the USA national team within a year awesome. and have been uh, playing on the USA national team now. And I'm just working daily, weekly, monthly to get better, improve. And the goal is to be in the Olympics in 2016 in Rio or 2020 or 2024 or for ever long that I can play and compete at a high level. I'm going to go for it. Awesome, man. Well, I'm sure we're all, uh, you know, rooting for you and the rest of the team uh, and the USA handball team to really, you know, do some amazing things. I know a lot of us haven't even heard of the Olympic right. handball team. I didn't even know what it was until you started doing it. Um, and it looks like an awesome, awesome sport. And I know you were saying that the U.S. is like one of the only countries that hasn't. For what, what were you saying? It's like one uh, of the only countries. It's one of the only. Uh, it's one of the sports, only uh, sports US, we have not right. meddled in. Yeah, we have not meddled in the U.S. Oh, so. Crazy. Well, time for you to change that, right? <laughs> exactly. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Lewis. If, if you could give everybody uh, watching and listening to this right now sort of one piece of advice before you go, maybe your best piece of advice for somebody um, just starting out or, or living life right now, and maybe they're not completely happy, maybe there's something holding them back, what would you, what would you sure. tell them? What I'm going to tell you is this, is that we all are afraid of something. We all have certain walls, guardedness, defensiveness, fears that are holding us back from really achieving amazing greatness. And once you are able to recognize what these are, for you, think of what your button is, where you're, you're holding yourself back. If you're saying, oh, I can't build this business because I don't have the time, then you really need to look at that as something that's holding you back and break through on the time limiting belief. If you're saying, oh, well, I don't have a college degree or I'm only 20 years old, so how can I build a business and who would ever buy anything from me? Then you need to break through that wall of understanding that you are youthful and you are joyous and powerful and you have um, energy and that energy is magnetic for people. If you think you're old, you're too old and no one's going to listen to you because you're 60 or 70, you need to break through on that and realize, look, I've got all the wisdom in the world and I can share my information of years of experience with so many people, and that's the value I bring. If you are a man or woman, you can do the same thing. Uh, if you say, oh, I don't have the money for something, you can, that's your wall that you need to break down and have a breakthrough in. So whatever it is your excuse is, you need to start focusing on breaking through that specific thing on a daily basis. And letting go of that excuse, because that's the thing that's going to hold you back from achieving greatness. So once you start to let go of the biggest thing that holds you back, if it's time, if it's age, if it's experience, money, if it's whatever, that you got hurt in the past, that you don't believe in yourself, that's the thing that you need to start focusing on the most and letting go of and breaking through. Once you do that, you will be amazed at the unbelievable things that come your way and the power that you're going to be able to share with the world. So that's, uh, that's my piece of advice and, uh, let it all go, baby. Dude, love it, man. Thank you so much, Lewis for everyone out there. Definitely check out Lewis. He has a, uh, actually a brand new looking website. It, it looks awesome. You can check it out at lewishouse.com. L E W I S H O W E S.com. Um, and it's responsive, so it works on your mobile or whatever. It's awesome. So, dude, thank you so much for coming on as a guest. Awesome. Dana, man. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you, Pat. Peace, bro. Awesome, dude. Uh, that was great. That was fantastic. And, and uh, sorry we couldn't get Lewis on video, but hopefully the audio worked out. Um, and I got a lot of great comments. Uh, thanks, Lewis. Dude, Lewis, if you're still watching this or you see this, everybody is saying thank you. Great stuff. Um, a bunch of people saying you have, you have a really nice voice, which, um, yeah, I mean, I'll agree with that. Um, his site, again, is lewishouse.com. Um, you know, he's done a lot of stuff. He, he, he has a LinkedIn product. 
Um, he, he has a webinar stuff. He, he's really awesome on webinars. Um, he's, he's just an amazing guy. I mean, I, I describe him as like this huge teddy bear who's like really athletic, a really athletic, huge teddy bear. Like that's, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, he's awesome. And, and you know, if, if, if there's one person to know in life, Lewis is, is the guy. He's just amazing. All right. So I guess we have a few minutes till, uh, till we can have our next guest on. So in the meantime, um, let's, let's answer a few questions from the audience. Let's, uh, let, let's, um, you know, if you have any questions for me, let me know. I'll answer them for a little bit. And then before we start our next interview, uh, we'll, we'll give away some prizes and, and see, see what's up with that. Um, I have my next guest on um, already. Um, so Mindy, if, if you're listening to this, uh, the next guest is, is, is um, Skyping me and asking me if this is the right place for the Ustream call. And uh, let me message him. Okay, awesome. Um, how do you stay so productive? This is from Ustreamer65 or 615-417. Um, there's a number of different things I do to stay productive. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of different things you can do to stay productive. I mean, one of the best things, and nobody ever talks about this, or hardly a lot of people talk about this, is sort of staying healthy and, and, and exercising and eating right. I mean, th this is, I mean, your body is what does the work. And so the better fuel you can put into it, the better your body is going to work. And the better your mind is going to think. And seriously, I, I, since juicing and, and, and eating well, and, and actually since recently training for my half marathon, I've just become super focused and super productive. A lot of you know I'm doing a ton of things right now, and I would definitely wouldn't be able to do this if I was just, blah, you know. And, and, and sometimes when I eat terribly, um, I, I feel blah, right? So that's one thing. Another thing is, is just really trying to get rid of all the distractions and focusing on one thing at a time. And um, I don't know if people can see this. Uh, let me see if I can find, actually. Can you guys hear me okay still? I'm gonna try and draw on this whiteboard. I don't know if it's gonna work out, but I can see, and I have this like, I have a 20 foot, I have a 20 foot cord so I can still hear you and, and see you. Um, let me, okay, awesome. So imagine, this is Pat's productivity tip. So imagine you have two projects. Project A and Project B, and each project takes about uh, you know three weeks to complete. For example, um, or A, B, and C, you have three projects: Project A, Project B, and Project C. Can you guys see that? Okay. So let's say this is this is like the journey that you had. This this is this represents maybe nine weeks of work, right? So this is can you guys see over here? So this is scenario one. And scenario two, let me draw nine boxes down here for nine weeks as well. One, two, three, three, one, two, three, one, two. So I can't see the chat right now, and I just drew to the edge there. So let's say you have three different things you're working on at the same time. And you sort of want to do them all at the same time. So you devote one week, week one, to project A. Um, actually, let me do a different color just so you can see that. Because um, I like colors. Okay, let's let's say project uh, week one, you work on project A, then you work on project B the second week, and let's see if I can get another color in here, and then project C. So by the end of three weeks, you have a third of each product done, right? So A, B, and C, you have nothing yet. You have thirty-three percent of each product. Uh, so so let's let's go back and and work on project A again, and then project B, and then project C. So by the end of six weeks, again, you have no complete projects, but you're 66% of the way on each of them. So, so you're getting close, right? And then lastly, finally, the, uh, the week seven, week eight, and week nine, then... So let's see... Oh, you lost my audio. Oh, okay. You can hear me. Okay, so let's do scenario number two. This is what happens when you work on, th on things one at a time. So let's say you're going to work on project A, right? On week one, week two, oh, whoops, that was totally wrong. Two, and then week three, all project A. Same amount of time put into each of them, but you're doing them first. So what happens at this moment? You have one complete project already, and... Think about this. And when you're working on one thing and just focusing on that, maybe you would finish it in two weeks, 
right? So you'd actually finish it a little bit quicker because all your focus is on that. You know, just-in-time learning is, is another term for sort of when you're trying to discover what to do. Just learn about what you need to do for this. Instead of A, B, and C, you're just working on A, right? Now, of course, week four, five, and six for project B, look at this. At the six-week mark, in the other scenario, you had nothing. You had nothing. <laughs> uh, and, and at the end of the six-week mark, in scenario number two, you have two complete things already. And again, it may be happening faster because you're working on things one at a time. And then, of course, CCP. So I hope that demonstrates sort of the power of working on one thing at a time. And I just had a podcast episode about this, um, but it's really important. And yeah, I know I have a lot of projects that, uh, going on at the same time, but, but whoa, what was that? Oh, but I'm focusing on one at a time. And luckily, because of passive income, when one thing is sort of done, uh, it can continue to work and I can work on something else. So, uh, okay, awesome. So it is 12.55. We have a little bit more time. Um, let's see, any, any questions for me? Any more questions? That's cool that it like actually get on the whiteboard and you can see it actually. Um, how do you keep track of all your... Uh, no, actually, I have each of the income streams. I mean, you're probably talking about affiliate marketing and stuff like that. Well, okay. For one, my CPA is awesome. He is, he works as a bookkeeper. They keep track of all the sort of ingoing income um, and obviously outgoing income too. Now, with things like affiliate marketing, and I have a lot of different things that I recommend and, and have used and, and have enjoyed that I recommend uh, and I'm confident recommending to my audience, um, you know, I, I track sales as they happen, not as they're paid out because a lot of those affiliate um, you know, partnerships pay out two, three months after just to make sure, you know, um, there aren't any refunds or, you know, keeps track of all that stuff. So luckily I have really quickly, um, a, an app on Chrome called speed dial. And with whatever product I recommend to my audience, I have that up on speed dial. So I can just push a button. It goes right to the login page where I can log in, see the report and just get the data from there that I can then put in my monthly income reports. Um, Top 10 plugins. Oh, that's going to be, that That would be a good blog post, actually, but I don't think I have time for this. Um, I recommend a weekly Q&A podcast. We need you, Pat. Uh, this is from Ustreamer240383. I'm actually doing, um, actually, if you have a question for me, and for some reason I'm not able to answer it here because there's just so many people, which is awesome, and you can go to speakpipe.com slash Pat Flynn, and there you can, um, you can, you can leave me a voicemail, and I'm actually going to be doing a number of, you know, user or listener question specific podcast episodes where I'm going to answer maybe four or five questions all in one episode, and I'll do that hopefully every five episodes. That's what I'm planning to do. So leave me a voicemail there. Um, it's better than sort of just asking, um, you know, via text or email because uh, we, we get to hear your voice, and you get, to a little, you get a little promo spot for your business too if you have one. Uh, let's see. What books are you reading right now? Uh, I just finished a fiction book, actually, and it was really good. Um, it was Dan Brown's Inferno, his latest sort of book. And, uh, you know, I typically read self-help books, obviously, but, um, you know, it was nice to read a fiction book. I hadn't done that in a while, and actually I listened to it. Um, I'm also... I'm also been... Actually, I've been listening to books actually more than reading them just because it's more convenient and I can... I can be more productive that way, especially when I'm on my runs, which are between an hour and hour and a half sometimes each day. So I listen to books. I've, I listen to uh, Out, Outliers, um, which is a good one. Uh, the Tipping Point, Malcolm Gladwell. Um, I listen to Decisive with Chip and Dan Heath, which is one that Derek Halpern recommended on socialtriggers.com. Uh, if you're interested in sort of my favorite books, uh, you can join my book club. If you go to patflynn.me, you'll see a link for a book club there. You can sign up and I send emails out with different books that I've been reading. Um, I think I sent an email out recently about the Lean Startup, which is a great book for the sort sort of startup world, but it totally applies to everyone doing online business or blogging too. Um, you know, working with minimum viable products and 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 really getting deep into to the details of of the issues of a product before you go 100% with it, because um, you know your audience, your customers are going to sort of guide you on where it should go. So things like that. Let's see. Uh, it is 1 p.m. Pacific, so we are halfway through right now. So you guys are awesome for sticking around. Let's see how many people we got. We have 109 viewers plus 359 guests. 
So since we're halfway through, I think this would be a great time for you to sort of send a tweet out about this. Uh, make sure to use the hashtag LetGoDay, um, which you can see up there. So use the hashtag LetGoDay and put uh, send people to LetGoDay.com. Um, and I think, yeah, how about we, we, we offer a gift card? Um, yeah, let's just give away gift cards. Let's, let's offer an Amazon.com gift card to a random person who uses that Twitter hashtag let go day and also sends people this way um, on, on let to letgoday.com. So I'm going to be keeping track of that hashtag. Uh, and after the show, I'm going to scroll down and just find w- uh, one person at random and I'll, I'll DM you or, or I'll message you and um, you know, I'll give you a $20 Amazon gift card. So that'd be awesome. See you. This is so cool. Like every minute there's like dozens of let go day tweets. This is, this is awesome. Okay. So, yeah, let's add in our, our next guest. I had I had no idea that that this meeting that I was having here uh, was was actually going to be a pivotal. <laughs> More coffee. I had I had no idea that the meeting that I was having here that day was going to be such a pivotal. Oh my god! <laughs> what is wrong with me? Why is this so hard right now? <laughs> so it was about halfway through dinner when. What's up, dude? <laughs> hey, Matt. Hey, Pat. Everybody's. Mm-hmm. Everybody can see him. Cliff, what's up, man? Say hi to everybody on uh, celebrating Let Go Day with me today. Happy Let Go Go Day. <laughs> so everybody, this is Cliff Ravenscraft, one of my most favorite people in the world. He and I are in a mastermind group together that meet every week, um, and a lot of my success comes from uh, from him actually, and, and his suggestions and inspiration, uh, and and we just you know help each other out, and I love that. And Cliff is the one who really helped me get my podcast started, and you know four million downloads later. Uh, just Cliff, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so much for coming on. How are you today? I have never been better. It gets better every single day, my friend. And I'm so excited about your Let Go Day and the live stream. I've been following along. It looks pretty awesome, dude. Oh, awesome. Thanks, man. Dude, crazy. When we started Let Go Day, we had 91 reviews of Let Go on Amazon. And I think right now, uh, well, last time I saw it, which was an hour ago, it was up to 141. So um, it's a lot. And, and, you know, this is just so cool to have the community come together. And there's no other person I would rather share with them than, than you because you are just so inspiring. And you have an incredible story, actually, of how you got started with podcasting. I would love for you to sort of tell everyone sort of how you got into to what you do now. Well, it all started as a hobby and just playing around, uh, being a tech geek and loving technology and the TV show Lost. Uh, I had yes. been blogging since 1996, and my blog was really nothing all that special until I started blogging about the TV show Lost. And uh, one, one day I, I wrote this really great theory about my thoughts about what the mystery, uh, the answer to the mystery of what was going on on this show, right between season one and season two. And at the time, I was listening to a couple podcasts devoted to the TV show Lost already, And I remember calling in some voice feedback and leaving my theory on a voicemail hotline. And then I heard my voice played back on somebody else's podcast. And I just like, oh, my gosh, that is so cool. I felt like I was a kid back in high school when I would call in those dedication uh, songs to a girl in high school. I don't know if you ever did did that. I did the same thing. Yeah. And she never heard it. Of course not. But but the thing is, is you hear your voice on the radio. And and I was one of those guys that's like, man, that is awesome. I could... And so I, I, I felt like, wow, my, my theory, my voice just got out, put out to the world. Well, somebody from Entertainment Weekly or EW.com had been listening to that podcast as well. They checked out my blog, and they went and did an entire story on EntertainmentWeekly.com and linked back to my blog. And the person who did that podcast said, Cliff, you ought to start a podcast. And so a couple of weeks later, I launched my very first podcast with $35 invested. And now I'm over 3,000 podcast episodes later, more than 30 shows, and uh, this is what I do for a living now. That is so crazy. How 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 was it when you first started the show, Law, uh, your your Law show? I mean, was it immediate success, or you know what what sort of happened after you created your podcast? 
I'm scared to tell it because the fact is, is that it was immediate success and it's not almost, it's almost never immediate sex success for anybody. Uh, but I had some unique situation, uh, circumstances behind it. I didn't have a large blogging audience that, you know, going into my podcast like you did, Pat, when you started. But for me, uh, what happened was my podcast was called the Lost, po the Weekly Lost Podcast. And we were in iTunes about the same exact time that uh, the TV show could be purchased online the very next day in iTunes. People had been illegally downloading these shows for a long time, but finally you could go in and, and legally pay $1.99 or whatever for each new episode the day after. So people were searching for Lost in iTunes every single day. We're talking millions of people. And if you scrolled down, you would see the, you know, maybe some music, uh, what do you call those, the music tracks or whatever, the soundtracks. And mm -hmm. then you scroll down below that and you would see podcasts. This is before they had apps. This was before they had um, uh, iBooks and all the other stuff. So it was basically TV episodes, music, and then podcasts. And we were right next to the official Lost Podcast. So there we were. That's cool. So by the thir third episode, we had 17,000 subscribers. Dude, crazy. And, and I know the story as far as like when the season finale, or not the season finale, but the series finale happened. You actually had people, you, you, you created like a, a party where people could come in and, and watch the sort of finale with you. And you had people come in from all around the world to, yeah. to watch with you. Um, we did so that. Crazy. Yeah, we did that. We did that for uh, a couple of the season finale parties. So we would have people come from all over the world, and uh, we we outgrew our home, and we moved into a like one of those home theater entertainment stores, and we kind of outgrew that. And when we did the uh, series finale party, we uh, reserved the entire restaurant at the Hilton Hotel in Cincinnati, and uh, we had over a hundred people come, and it was just an amazing event. We had all the news and everybody there. That's awesome. Now, you weren't making money from your podcast at the beginning. You weren't even doing it for a living. It was just like a hobby. Like you said, what, what were you doing before you sort of went full-time with your podcast, and what was that transition like for you? Yeah, I was actually an insurance agent at the time, working in a family-run insurance agency. My dad owned the agency, and it had been in the business uh, family business since 1929. Um, and I had been there for 11 years before I left. And I was doing extremely well, extremely successful. Uh, I thought I loved my job in insurance until I found about, out about podcasting. And uh, the more I got into podcasting, the more I fell in love with it. And then I started to see my job as a distraction from what I really wanted to do with my life, which was mm -hmm. to entertain, educate, encourage, and inspire other people through the content that I create. And over time, I learned that I, help, I enjoy helping other people uh, do the same thing. And so I, for the first, uh, for the first year of podcasting, there was no money whatsoever that came into me. Uh, some people donated some money for some equipment and said, Hey, your audio sounds horrible. Uh, why don't you go up? <laughs> why don't you upgrade from what you're using now? Uh, and that was fun. So we, we upgraded our audio quality and, and stuff, but it was just for the love of it. And just for the love of it, I was working somewhere between 40 to 65 hours a week in my insurance career and I was working somewhere between 20 to 40 hours a week in podcasting. And by the end of the first year, I already had three different shows that I was producing, two of them on a weekly basis, one of them on a daily basis. Awesome. And when was it, when was it that you discovered that, you know, you wanted to sort of let go from your insurance and, and do podcasting full time? It was 18 months into podcasting. Uh, about a year after I started podcasting, I started podcastanswerman.com. I had started having a lot of people who asked me, Cliff, how can I get into podcasting? I want to start a podcast. And so I started off with some webinars and then I decided a weekly Q and a format would be probably the best way to help people out. And so I launched podcast answer, man. I had people willing to pay me to teach them how to podcast. And so I would do that one-on-one -on -one coaching and consulting. And I didn't think that it was ever going to be anything other than just a little bit of extra income, but it was. And eventually some people said, gosh, Cliff, you could make a living doing this. And every time somebody told me that, I told my wife, but I didn't think it would ever be possible. Um, the fact was that podcasting started to become all-consuming, and it actually started to uh, really affect my income when it came to insurance because a lot of my insurance was in commission sales. 
And I stopped selling policies because I kind of lost interest in selling policies. And I just went into uh, customer service mode. And mm -hmm. I was just basically helping anybody who had questions, but I wasn't looking to sell new stuff. I, just, I just wanted to podcast. And, and I became quite miserable in my day, day job. And I knew that podcasting was probably never going to be something that would you know, pay all the bills. I've got a, a wife and three young kids. My wife's a stay-at-home mom. There's no way I could make a living doing podcasting. So I decided I either need to quit podcasting or quit insurance. And so I quit, ins or I quit podcasting for one week. And uh, when I quit podcasting, I woke up the next day and I get out of bed. And I forced myself to go to work. And all I could think about all day long was not going home to see my wife, not going home and hanging out with my kids. But the only thing I could think about all day was just to go. Uh, that's all. How many hours before I can go to bed? Because the, my, my, you know, the, it was just a tough environment. People, you know, it, it just wasn't what fulfilled me anymore. And I, I went through that day after day after day. And then finally, after one week, I decided, you know what, I am going to try to make a living doing podcasting. I am going to try to get there. It may take me five or 10 years. That's fine. But I am going to go for this. Um, and, and so I started up, you know, going full bore into podcast answer man and, and creating ways to generate streams of income. And one day things got so bad at the day job, you know, that, that there was just this huge blow up with my family and, and just the, some other circumstances about how the office was being managed. And I decided, you know what, I just can't do this anymore. And I came home and I was just like really upset. And my wife says, you're going to quit your job. And I'm like, what? And she says, you're going to do podcasting full time. And I'm like, I, but I can't tell you, everybody what you're supposed to do. I need my husband back. The kids need their father back. And this is what you're going to do. And she said, if I have to go and get a job, I'll go. What's that? Hello? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is crazy. So, so just, just wrapping up your story, um, you, you, your wife it was the one who told you that she needed you back because you just weren't happy with the insurance. And um, so you just decided to do podcasting full time. How did you, um, how did you, what, what was going through your head at the time? Did you think you could support yourself with podcasting? I had this crazy idea that I that I could work myself up to it. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew that it was what I was supposed to do. And, uh, you know, we were debt-free except for our mortgage, and so that allowed us a lot of extra freedom and margin in our life. Um, there was some money put away in a pension that I had access to, a worst-case scenario. And also I was privileged to have the opportunity that if I put a 90-day notice in and after one year it didn't work out, I could always go back because I had a family-run insurance agency. Uh, for heaven's sake, if I wouldn't have left, I would own the agency today. My dad would have retired a couple years ago. I'm so thankful I left because I, I'd never want to go back to that. But I will tell you this. Uh, in, uh, of course, you know, everybody's got different uh, standards of living and, and, and stuff like that, cost of living and, and everything. But here in northern Kentucky, just outside of the Cincinnati, you may, if you make more than $60,000 a year, you're doing pretty good in this area. And I was making $87,000 a year when I left insurance um, back in 2008, uh, or actually at the end of 2007. And my first year of doing podcasting full time, I made $11,000 for the entire year. And so a total of $11,000 personal income. Now, the business made more money than that, but the business was paying my health insurance for the family and and overhead for running the business and paying the CPA fees and all that other stuff. Uh, but at the end of the year, my W-2, $11,000 is all I made. And it was the fun part of that was that in uh, January, I lived off of my December income from 2007. In February, I lived off of my uh, Christmas bonus from the year before. In March, April, and May, I lived off of our tax refund check. And then we lived a couple months off of a 10, actually we took out $14,000 out of my pension, paid, uh, what was it, 4000 in taxes and penalties. So we lived off of $10,000 from there. And then we lived off the rest of the year off the $11,000 personal income that the business was finally able to pay me as paychecks. 
And so that must have been, I mean, at, ever, at any moment during that first year, did you ever just want to give it up because you just it wasn't bringing in the income like you had hoped? I never wanted to give up, but I oftentimes questioned whether or not I was actually going to succeed. Uh, but I, but here's the deal. Whenever I was down and, you know, just literally in tears when it came time to sit down and pay the bills and trying to make ends meet, uh, my wife talked me through it. And there were times when she was, she needed to pay for something. She needed money to go buy kids clothes for the kids at school, you know, to go back to school and stuff. Um, and there were times when she was broken down and I was full of faith and hope and saw the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. And I was able to mm-hmm. convince it's her that, that we should continue to move forward. And uh, it took us, it took about 18 months before really I felt confident that it was going to be successful. And as you know, Pat, um, today I, I can easily make $55,000 in a single month. And I, I mean, all I have to do is say, that's what I want to do this month. And it's not a problem at all. I mean, Cliff, you, you have just turned things around like crazy. And I'm really appreciative of the fact that you had mentioned the support you had for your wife and also the the support that, you gave your wife too along the way. I think it's really important to sort of have that, um, you know, during during the journey, especially when you start to question your step, yourself or things may not be going the way you want them to. It's really important to have the people who um, are going to be there for you. And you know, I I experienced the same exact thing with my wife too. I think that's a big lesson. And and, and really, um, even if you're not married, of course, it's, it's easy to go out there. Maybe not necessarily, but you know, you need to go out there and find other people that can sort of help you and lift you up, you know, who, who are on the same sort of, uh, you know, might, who have the same sort of mindset as you. I and mean, it's really hard, especially when, you know, and this is a problem that a lot of people have. They have friends and family who don't really believe in their decisions to, to make changes. And um, I don't know if that's those people trying to self-validate themselves or their versus where someone else is trying to go. Um, you know, I, I use this bucket of crabs analogy where, you know, if you, if you actually take a bucket and put a bunch of crabs in it, no crabs will ever come out. Because once one crab to go up, all the other crabs pinch you and bring it back down. Um, and, and we we live in in a, in a huge bucket of crabs, you know. But you got to find those um, people or helpful crabs. I don't know what the analogy is for the helpful people, but you, know, you got to go out there and, and find people that are actually going to help lift you up. And that, that's why you and I are in a mastermind group together, um, and, yeah. and that's why I'm in two, two other ones, just because it's, it's so important. And Lewis, who was on earlier, Lewis House, he was talking about how important that was as well. Um, uh, just, dude, like, uh, you know, we, we have some uh, other things to take care of today, but uh, I just, I really wanted you on because you're just so genuine uh, and, and, and you're so, you know, kind-hearted and, and, and you deserve all the success that you had. And, you know, you mentioned about 18 months until you started to know that things were going were gonna to happen for you. I, I found that that was, you know, how much time it took for me when I started Green Exam Academy to get to a point where I started monetizing it. And even with Smart Passive Income, it was about, 18 months, uh, a year and a half to two years before things started finally rolling. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of the, you know, people just sort of need to give themselves time to find that success too. We all expect things to happen too fast. And we hear about the success stories that happen overnight. And really those are the ones, you know, when you really go deep into them, they're, they're not even overnight successes either. Um, any final words of wisdom before uh, we have to, um, you know, sign off and say goodbye, and, you know, I'll talk to you on, on Wednesday, of course, uh, in our mastermind group. But any final words of wisdom for everybody out there watching? I just want to, if I can, share a, a three short uh, paragraphs or just a couple sentences each from uh, my favorite quote from the book Rework by Jason Fried, and it's called yeah, The I'll... Myth of the Overnight Sensation. So uh, Pat's going to pull the book up so he can show you the, cop- uh, the, the cover of it. But anyway, let me read this to you. It says, you will not be a big hit right away. You will not get rich quick. You are not so special that everyone else will instantly pay attention. No one cares about you, at least not yet. Get used to it. You know those overnight success stories you've heard about? It's not the whole story. Dig deeper, and you'll usually find people who have busted their butts for years to get into the position where they could take, things could take off. And on, on the rare occasion that instant success does occur, come along, it usually doesn't last. There's no foundation there to support it. Trade the drop of overnight success for slow, measured growth. It's hard, but you have to be patient. You have to grind it out. You have to do it for a long time before the right people notice. And, and 
last line right there, Pat, you have to grind it out. You have to do it for a long time. And the, and the biggest words for me, I'll tell you what, in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, every single time I can point to an, an individual who I, who I will consider to be a right person who noticed me and my philosophy of life and what I was trying to accomplish, who believed in me and saw my potential, there were the right people who did come along and they happened to have a platform and they put me out there to their community. And it was those right people and those connections and those relationships that really propelled me forward. And, uh, you know, Pat, I consider you also to be among those who were one of the right people as well. I'm very thankful for our friendship and I'm thankful for the opportunity to celebrate your let go day with you. So thank you very much, Pat, for having me here. Well, thank you, Cliff. Um, you know, you mean the world to me. Um, everybody out there watching, you know, just give give Cliff a big, uh, you know, round of applause and, and thank you. Um, thank you, dude. So, so for everyone out there who's interested in podcasting, I mean, you are the man to go to. So check him out. You can go to podcastanswerman.com. He has an amazing course called Podcasting A to Z, which you can find at podcastinga to z.com. It's going to help you get your podcast up and running. And he's going to work with you, like, for weeks to make sure that you do what you need to do to get your podcast up and up and running. And a lot of the people who are at the top of the podcast rankings now are graduates of that course. So I uh, just want to make sure I give you a little plug there, Cliff. And dude, thanks okay. again uh, so much for having for coming on. Thank you very much, Pat. Have a great day and uh, happy let go to a to everyone else out there. And if you haven't let go yet, man, do it. Gotta let go. <laughs> All right, guys. See you guys. See ya. Okay, awesome. This is great. Um, Mindy, are you there? My little voice in my head. Awesome. So we're at 151 reviews on Amazon, which is great. I would love for you, if you have read the book, Let Go Already, um, to or listen to it, actually. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com and leave a review there for or me. And honest, please, um, please, please make it honest. Um, and also, if you haven't picked up the book yet, you can get it on Amazon.com, or you can get the audiobook actually for free today, just today only. So if you go to smartpassiveincome.com, check out the latest post about Let Go Day, there is a, an audio file for you that you can download and listen to the story. Again, if you listen to that and you enjoyed it, you can go leave a review. You don't need to have purchased it on Amazon in order to leave a review. Um, so again, thank you guys so much. This is awesome. Um, I'm going to run downstairs really quick and uh, so uh, let's see if I can run down there. Mindy, if you want to play maybe the rest of the blooper video. I don't know if there's any more left, um, but I will, I'll be right back, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> That's a good outtake. more like what's the next step what can we do <laughs> okay <laughs> bye bye you working a lot and <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> this is the hardest like filming ever um yeah poor editing county you have to stay out of the camera line okay Go above or there behind uncle caleb watch what uncle caleb does okay can you wave Whoa, you see that? Okay. Uh, I think everybody can see this. What's up? This is uh this is Kailani, my daughter. And let me see if I can grab my son. Oh, oh it's so heavy. Yeah, I got kids in my hands. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so this is Keone. He has his little water gun. Can you say hi? Hi. Say hello. Or say happy let go day. Happy let go day. Awesome. Hey, bub. Can you say happy let go day? <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. Thank you. No, that's my mic. Nope. Don't, don't grab that. Nope. Nope. Okay. She, like, sees something and then, like, just goes for it. Uh, and my wife's going to come in soon just to say hi. But I, will, I wanted to show you kids. You know, I talk a lot about my family on the show. Um, I'm actually 
This is, uh, I haven't told this to anyone yet. Actually, maybe I have, but I'm doing, oh no, she took the little phone piece off. Oh man. No, no, not that. Okay, this is crazy. Um, hmm. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you, uh, everyone just, everyone's saying hi. Can you wave? And she's in this mode where she likes to climb on you. Like, see that? She like digs her, like talons into your tummy. Uh, here we go. This is my wife, April, as you know from the book. Hi, everybody out there. There's uh, there's 400 plus people watching, and this is going to be recorded. So that was another question a lot of you had. You know, is this going to be recorded and played later? Later, yes, it will. Um, one of the questions is who is Hawaiian or why the Hawaiian name? Um, we're not Hawaiian, although we look Hawaiian. I was born on an island, but not Hawaii. She said she was born on an island, but not Hawaii. It was Guam. Right, I guess right. Yeah, but she was born on Guam. Um, and we've always just loved island culture. And our kids sort of look, you know, happy. So, um, oh, she's blowing bubbles in April's face. Um, April, oh, someone said, hey, April, you were a great choreographer. For those of you out there who don't know what that means, actually, April choreographed the... I don't know why I'm patting her head. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, she choreographed our wedding dance, and you, you can see that on YouTube, actually. Um, not on the Smart Passive Income channel, but I'll, I'll link to it somewhere. Uh, April has the cutest dimple. Smile it up, girl. <laughs> uh, let's see. Smile it up. Hi, April Worldwide. This is as good as the blooper reel. Yes. What's up, Chris? Um, dude, what are you doing? Are you okay? Okay. Oh. All right. Well, um, my arms are like getting really tired. No, you can. Uh, I was just wanted to have you guys on to say hi. You want to say bye? <clears throat> bye. <laughs> All right. Yay. Thank you. Oh, there's one more family member. I forgot to. Excuse me. Come here. Let's see if we could get somebody take a screenshot of this because uh, this, this this is a pretty awesome. Okay. The Giz, the Giz, what's up Gizmo? Yeah, okay. So this is Gizmo, um, he's a Maltese, and he's pretty awesome. And uh, let's see if you can get a close up. What's up Giz? Oh, don't type. Hi everybody, my name is Gizmo. <laughs> he's uh, four years old. Okay, thanks guys. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna answer a few more questions. Thank you. Bye buddy. Bye. Did you eat lunch yet? No? Okay, I'll make you lunch after, okay? Okay. I ate lunch already. Oh you did eat lunch? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, can you close the door? Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good. Ah, so um Father's Day was awesome and uh let me close the door here. Oh, thank you. So that's my family. That that's my family. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, Gizmo is a Maltese. Gizmo is Maltese. Oh, do you guys want to see something pretty cool? Watch this. Oh, wait. I won't go any further. So my desk is actually a standing desk, and I'll whip around this camera. Yes. So this desk here actually has these buttons right here. And if I push this, it goes up. And if I push this, it goes down. You choose whether or not I can, someone's like, I hope you're wearing pants. Um, no comments, but sorry. Um, so this is my office, I guess. Um, I have the, I have the, I'm set up for this live streaming and it's kind of funky because I have the computer sort of on an angle pointing towards this side of the room. And then I have this giant light that's up here, like on the desk, and then I have all this stuff in the room. There's my Back to the Future poster. Um, this is a fan that's keeping me cool. This is a wall that I'm painting right now. I'm actually going to change the color. There used to be some giant whiteboards on there, but I took them down just because I was using this whiteboard, and it's a little easier, and I wanted to reserve nice for, like, videos and stuff. So that's a little tour of my 
the Hill Markets. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Okay, so what should we do? Should we give away another prize? Let's give away another prize. Oh, uh, Mindy, I wanted to tell you, um, that person had and won't be able to make it. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's why I brought, um, brought the kids. But let's give away another prize. We'll, we'll give away this thing at the end, at the very end, because this is like sort of grand prize, I guess you could say. But let's give away a, what did we give away last? Amazon, oh, somebody who, the, who, who tweets the hashtag like out day. Um, so you still have time for that one. I'm up to the end of the, uh, up to the end of the broadcast. I'll, I'll find somebody and I'll reach out to you and we'll hook you up with that $20 Amazon gift card. For the iTunes one, let's, what should we have people do? Mindy, any ideas? Um, maybe I mean I've been on I, I've been on these live broadcasts before and like we ask what, where they like ask the audience a question and everyone answers and they, you know to try and find the best one or like who was the first one to answer and that's always impossible so that's why all the prizes are sort of random today um, but we're about to give away another prize let's uh, let's um, let's have everybody in the chat stream answer with something let's say um, oh here we go for those of you who listen to my podcast. For those of you who listen to my podcast, um, you know at the beginning of every show, I have like an interesting fact about me. The, the movie announcer voice guy says sort of interesting facts about me. So to qualify for this one, you have to reply with, uh, in the chat stream with your favorite sort of fact about me that I mentioned on the podcast episodes, um, you know, at the beginning of each of the shows. Um, so I want to see what people put down and what people remember. Uh, and 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 then we'll go from there and and see if we can. So how much I wait as a baby, play fantasy football, Pitch Perfect is one of my favorite movies. I'm afraid of spiders. Um, and I'm, again, I'm just gonna pick someone at random and read these out. Uh, I miss the winter in Connecticut sometimes. Yes. Uh, I made stop motion videos as a youngster. Marching band, of course. Um, Dream to be an extra in a movie. Loves fantasy football. Um, my favorite game playing was Oregon Trail. I played the trumpet. I bought a Sega instead of a PlayStation. I look back to the future. Marching band. Um, I didn't get a PlayStation yet. That one's a, that one. Just, I don't know to talk about that. Uh, I have a unibrow. Yes, if I didn't pluck this thing right here, I would have a unibrow. Um, plays the trumpet. I am not Hawaiian. I don't think that was in an uh, I learned to fold the shirt on YouTube. Yes, I did actually. A Martha Stewart video. Uh, my mother's 410, yes. My favorite fact is that I love family. Oh, this person's saying that. Um, that's my favorite fact, too. Thank you. Um, I love shopping at Target, yes, especially in midday. Like, right now, I would go to Target normally, and there'd be, like, nobody there. So I could park really easily. I'd be, like, the only dude there with some kids, um, and there'd be no waiting in line. It's awesome. Uh, human beatbox. Yes, I can do, I can do that. Um, let's see. I want to get better broadcasting. Okay. That's awesome. You guys remembered, which is so cool. Um, let me see. I'm going to pick. Drum roll, please. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a random. No. Ah. Stop. Everybody, just kidding. Right. Okay. So I'm going to pick um, R. W. Michael. R.W. Michael, who said, I want to be on Dancing with the Stars, which is totally true. And my wife wants me to be on Dancing with the Stars, too, because she has a crush on Tristan McManus, who's one of the professional dancers. So if I get to go, she gets to see him, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's a win for everybody. But anyway, uh, so uh, R.W. Michael, dude, uh, uh, congratulations. Um, can you private message MWG142, one of the moderators? It's Matt. You will um, get your information, and then I'll send you the $20, um, what was it, the iTunes gift card. So you could buy um, some apps and stuff and music. Awesome. What are you guys listening to lately? This isn't for a prize. I'm just curious. Um, I recently picked up the new Daft Punk album. As a lot of you know, in my most recent, one of my most recent episodes, I sang Lucky or Get Lucky um, and did a acapella Daft Punk thing. Um, so let's see what people are listening to. Um, some people are like, did you go to the fair yet? No, I didn't go to the fair yet, which is terrible because I, I wish I I didn't, I haven't gone to the San Diego fair yet. Oh, gosh. Okay, question for all you technical geeks out there. This is a question for me to you. This is this is Jack. This is a – oh, Jack. Okay, I got it working. 
I would scroll down, and then every time someone would put something new, it would go back to the top. So I wasn't able to read it. Um, okay, so let's just answer some more questions. We have, we have about 25 minutes left. I hope you guys are having a good time. I just want to thank you guys so much for sticking on with me. And, you know, this is really fun. I think I want to do this more often. Um, and, and, you know, my team and I are going to explore the technology a little bit more, make things a bit smoother. This is pretty – it's going pretty good for the first time around, which is great. Um, you know, if there's any other you know, different platforms or a new way to do this, I don't know, but we'll see. Um, it might be fun to explore sort of what Creative Live is doing and how they're actually broadcasting. I don't know if they have their own platform that they've put, rigged up or if it's run through Ustream or I don't know, but it would be cool to check that out. Um, let's see. Uh, Pat, you need to check out SoundCloud. It's a great place to start hosting your podcast. Hmm. People are switching from iTunes to it. I'll check that out. Thank you. Uh, how's NSD2 going? This is great. A lot of people are asking about NSD2, which is Niche Site Dual 2.0. I recently published a post talking about how I was potentially thinking about getting into the minivan um, you know, niche because I have a minivan, and actually it's something I'm quite interested in. I know a little bit about. Um, and I was sort of weighing the pros and cons to that uh, you know, because there isn't that much search volume, but I know a lot of people who go through the process, including myself, of buying a van and don't really know where to start. Um, but then I'm going to be writing a follow-up post for this, but those of you who are on, I guess you uh, – you're special, um, or you are special, so I'm going to give you some insider information. Um, yeah, I was really thinking about getting – I was so close until I did a bit more keyword research, and I found another keyword that uh, has a lot more search volume, is a lot less competitive, um, and it is something that I do every week. And it has to do with um, a sort of another type of automobile. That's all I'm going to share for now, but I'm going to write a post that's going to come out later this week, most likely Friday. Wednesday, I have a podcast episode with Noah Kagan from AppSumo coming out. So look out for that. It's about – it's over an hour of, of awesome content. That, Noah Kagan has an incredible story. Um, you'll hear on the podcast, um, but it's just uh, what he's gone through. And, and, and all, he talks a lot about all of his failures. Um, which is which is interesting, and, and he now has the successful you know the startup with AppSumo.com, and we talk a lot about strategies and tactics and, and really needy stuff. I mean, he even told me before we recorded the episode, he's like, I want this to be your best podcast episode. So he really brought his 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 game. Um, so going back to uh, niche site tool, yeah, on Friday I'm going to post more information about the niche that I am going to get into. Um, and I think it'll be pretty exciting. I'm actually really excited about it. It's uh, going to require some out-of-the-box thinking as far as link building, and I am going to try and keep it as white hat as possible. I actually want to try to not force any link building. Like, I want it to all happen naturally. That would be ideal. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Um, have you ever done testing with Gumroad? Not yet, but I know people who are using it and who are loving it because it's killer, gumroad.com. Uh, niche Site Tool 2.0. You guys want to keep talking about Niche Site Tool 2.0. Um, so I'll reveal that niche on Friday, and we'll get started. And I'll also hopefully be really close to selecting the five people who are going to be in the Mastermind Learning Group with me. That will be really fun. Um, the leaderboard, I know a lot of you are asking questions about the leaderboard. Is it still being worked on? But I have seen the, ver the sort of beta or alpha version of it, and it looks great. I can't wait to get everyone signed up for it so they can sort of share their keyword, not the actual keyword, all that's going to be hidden, and not the actual URL of the site you're going to be using or building, but it's going to be, it's going to show interesting data about that keyword like search volume and um, competition and things like that so that we can all sort of compare where we're at and also sort of feel like we're competing against each other in a friendly way, and it'll keep track of the rankings, and um, it'll be really cool, I think. And I don't think I mentioned this either. There's actually going to be a forum on that site wherever that leaderboard is situated, which will be at nichesitedual.com. Currently, that URL redirects to a page on smartpassiveincome.com, but it's going to change over to its own house or its own sort of hub for niche site tool. It's going to have the place where you can sign up to put your niche site in um, and, and sort of join the group. And also, it will have a forum where uh, people can keep track of conversations and get help from each other and stuff. And I think that's really important. A lot of people have been asking me to do a Facebook group like I do with my Kindle group, but – um, the Facebook group has been awesome, uh, and it is awesome. But as far as organizing the content that's in there and being able to really easily pull things up that people have already talked about so that we don't have to keep repeating the same conversation, Facebook doesn't do a good job of that. You know, a lot of people are repeating the same conversations and asking the same questions. A forum is much better, um, I feel. Okay, uh, are you going to keep the URLs private or eventually reveal them? 
uh, me, I'm going to I'm going to reveal them, but I'm I'm still contemplating some interesting tactics on how to make sure that you know my sort of test run at this is uh, and and case study is is um, you know is pure. I don't even know what the right word is, but is is un. Uh, oh gosh, I can't even describe it. But I I don't want just the fact that I'm posting this stuff on Smart Passing to help the site because that's not those aren't real results. I'm trying to figure out a way to sort of uh, make sure that the results are actual results and not as a result of being on Smart Passive Income, but we'll see. Uh, Pat, come to France with your family, and that's from Esteban. I would love to. I don't know what to say, but um, I don't even know how to speak French. Actually, April took French in, in high school. I took Spanish. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mike Toxic asks, I just joined Fizzle, run by your buddy Corbett, and actually it's run by also Caleb Wojcik, who is the videographer for Let Go, and my buddy um, Chase Reeves. Um, we're all good friends. Uh, I love Fizzle.co. If you're looking for a really tight knit group of community uh, and, and some really great, high quality um, instructional videos, check out Fizzle.co for sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, speaking of Chase Reeves, um, a lot of you know him. He did the redesign for ThinkTraffic.net, um, which is awesome. Um, and he just has just a really good eye for, for design. He came over to my house a couple weeks ago. He stayed for three days. He locked himself in my office, in this office here, and worked on the redesign of Smart Passive Income. And uh, we are at a point now where I'm comfortable, we're all comfortable with where the, the design is headed. Um, it's about to get coded on, on a sandbox site and then you know, we're going to be tested and, and tweaked a little bit here and there. But the, the, the redesign of Smart Passive Income is coming. Um, it's going to be great. And I think a lot of you are going to be happy. It's a, you know, I didn't want it to change too much, but it, had, it almost had to a little bit. I mean, it still has the same feel. It still has the same Pat Flynn personality, I, I think. But it's just a lot cleaner. And after working on this redesign, I went back to my own site, like after working with Chase on this. Um, I went back to, to my own site. And I, I can't look at it anymore. It's just, it's just like ridiculous how many things you can do on the homepage and how I, my eye just like hurts, right? And I think a lot of you would agree with that. How many of you would agree that when you go to smartpassiveincome.com, there's definitely a lot to take in and it could be overwhelming? I mean, just let me, let me hear amen. Amen. Um, I don't even know how delayed this is. I've, I've just been talking and everyone is still talking in here. Um, Okay, I got I got some amens, so that's good. So you're confirming that the site is is a, is a little bit cluttered. Um, a couple of people are saying it's a little bit cluttered. It's it's a lot cluttered. Um, you know, it was just a Frankenstein sort of contraption. You know, I I'd find somebody doing something that was awesome on their site, and I would just put it online. And the funny thing, and the thing I'm not not really scared of, I'm just curious about, um, is the fact that you know it's not necessarily broken right now. Right? The site isn't broken. It, it's working, and I'm making good income from it. It's helping a lot of people uh, in, in various ways. But I know it can, it can be improved. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see the sort of data-driven results, traffic, subscribers, income, with the new design versus how it is now. Um, I really, I mean, we are designing for higher subscription rates and more, you know, lower bounce rate and, and just a better user experience. So I, I, I thought, I think... You guys are going to be good. Oh, yeah, totally. Who is that? Who said that? Um, Ustreamer085612 mentioned that I sound like I have, a, I have a list. Maybe put the phone cover back on. And I just totally did. And I realized just now I was probably giving you a bunch of nasty noise just then. But, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, PhotoGirl67 asks, is Chase Reeves redoing the site? Yes, he is. Um, uh, Marcel Perez says, your UX user experience is not that bad, but it can be improved. I agree. Um, Cornelius Benton says, I love patflin.me website design. I also love copyblogger's new design. I actually haven't checked out copyblogger in a while, so I'll check that out. Uh, but thank you. Um, is Chase Reeves pretty in person? I wouldn't describe him as pretty. Um, but, um, you know, pretty handsome, I think, you know, especially with mustache, if you're into that thing. Um, 
I'm not really into mustaches very much. Um, I've tried growing one before, and it just comes out all spotty. And, you know, so in that regard, you know, I think his face is pretty cool. Um, anyway, this is such a weird conversation right now. Uh, what's up, Benny? Benny says, Chase does have some nice hair. Yes, he does. He has the mustache thing going on. I don't know if, Chase, you're watching this, but um, thank you for coming over. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Any other songs? Let's do a song. Or how about a trumpet song? I don't know. My family will probably be like, what the heck is going on up there? All right. We got a, people, we got a few people asking me um, for the trumpet. Oh, Chase. What's up, dude? Chase actually just texted me. He said, ha, you're killing it. Watching now. And I just lost the rest of that message. Um, and that was my question. Okay. Oh, oh, that was his question. Is Chase pretty? Chase, you dog. I can't believe you did that to me. Anyway. Thrift shop, a what, 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 what? Uh, Flight of the Bumblebee. I don't think I could do that on trumpet, but I could sing that. That'd be weird. Um, but I don't want to do, I don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Ben Jones, he says, this is getting weird. It's totally getting weird. Uh, when the Saints go marching in, do you like women with mustaches? Um, you know, I don't hate because some people can't control where hair grows. This is, again, a really weird conversation. Um <laughs> This is Ah, uh, okay. Oh well, okay. Mm. Let me see. Oh, let's give away another prize. How about how about I play something on the trumpet and the first person I guess we'll try. I mean Matt, maybe you'll have to go back and, and check this. Um sorry, I apologize. But I'm gonna play something on the trumpet and you're gonna have to guess what that song is. And first person to guess what that song is uh, will win a prize. Yeah, twenty dollar Amazon gift card. Okay, let me let me go get my trumpet then. Um, some people are asking me for my best dance moves. I don't know if I could do that. Okay, let me put down my mic really quick. Um, Minnie, I don't know if you have any more of that blooper reel left, but I'm gonna go get my trumpet and see what happens. So I'll be. Be like this on TV, like this. Ciao. <laughs> oh, you just have it. Ciao. Yeah. Okay. What? Oh, really? Is there anything you want to say, Keone? Oh, really? To your all your fans. They heard you on the podcast. What do you want to say to everybody? Ba. What does that mean? Cannon. Over there. <laughs> Cannon. Over there. <that. laughs> Stop. Have my trumpet, okay? I could do I could do cool tricks with it like this, right? Um, but anyway, I'm gonna play a song. Um, no, it's not gonna be Owen oh, Go Marching In, although I do love that song. Um, are there really 1,800 people on? Like, I'm not seeing that much, but that would be awesome. And now I'm even more scared. So thank you for telling me right before I, I play the trumpet. Um, let me see. This, I want you to tell me. Who this? Who composed the song? I should give you sort of a um, clue, I guess. Okay. I'm going to do a scale first. Just uh, I want to make sure I don't blow your ears out. But um, So I'm going to do a scale, and then let me know how that sounds, if it sounds okay. Okay. Don't, don't, but I think I'm good. Who composed this? One more time, one more time. Anybody? It wasn't that good. Yes, David Michael, right there. He said Mozart. A bunch of people are saying Mozart. Not David Guetta. No, David Guetta didn't, didn't compose that. Uh, and now my son's yelling. Uh, David Dash Michael. Congratulations. You won $20 Amazon gift card. Awesome. So, I'm not even making excuses. I didn't warm up. I don't have Bible oil in there. Um, <laughs> so, 
step away from the horn, bring it as you said. Um, but yeah, awesome. Thank you guys. So that was fun. So we had we only have ten minutes left. This is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> anybody send me a screenshot with my family. I would love that. Um, you can send it to pat at smartpassiveincome dot com. Um, that'd be awesome. Yeah, dude, this is this is so fun. Um, now I just want to quickly. Oh, you're totally right. <laughs> Thanks, Michal. I totally didn't have my mic on. Sorry. What was I saying? Um, I was saying something about the fact that we're only 10 minutes away from finishing up, which, which is crazy. Like, I was like, oh, three hours might be a lot. Um, and I know that would be a lot to have you guys on for three hours. So, I, I mean, I appreciate you guys for being here for almost two. Um, but this is, this is awesome. Uh, I want to give a shout-out after I burp. Uh, excuse me, to my team members. They are just awesome. These are the people who have helped put this together, who have helped put Let Go together. Um, so I want to start off by giving a big, huge shout-out to my, my man, Matt Gartland. Um, Matt, just thank you for everything. He he actually was originally the editor for Let Go. I went to him, and then he was like, where is this going to be published? And I told him it's going to be first published on Snippet app, which has all these videos and social media capabilities. And then he was like, okay you got a lot more work to do. So he decided to come on as a producer and, and sort of project manager for, uh, project manager for Let Go. Um, and, you know, I've just, I loved, I, I love what he does. And, and I'm, I'm going to be working with him on, on other projects in the future. He helped coordinate Let Go Day. Um, and uh, we're working together on a lot of exciting things. So um, thank you, Matt. I um, also want to give a shout out to Caleb Wojcik. Caleb, what's up, dude? Uh, you're my film guy. And, uh, you know, he first did some uh, stuff for me. Actually, um, there was an NMX, New Media Expo vid, uh, presentation I did this January, he was the one who actually edited that video after uh, Chris Ducker actually recorded it. What's up, Chris, if you're watching this? Um, and he did a really good job. And so when I needed a videographer, uh, it just made sense to have him on. And he did the trailer, you know, with the train and, and, and that story uh, really well. He did all the videos in, in Let Go. So thank you, uh, Caleb. Um, and then also also Mindy, Mindy Holohan, uh, or Holohan, Hol Holohan. Uh, Holohan, I think I said it right last time. Um, but Mindy, you're awesome. Uh, she's been taking care of the sort of uh, uh, production panel for Let Go Day, bringing the guests on, and, and she's been really helpful with, with the audiobook. She's the one that put the audiobook together again. Today's the last day that you can, actually the only day you can get the audiobook for free at smartpassiveincome.com. If you listen to it or if you've read Let Go, please go on Amazon, leave a review. I would love you for it. Um, again, please make it an honest review. If you want to help out even more, you could download Let Go. Uh, I know a bunch of people already who have downloaded the audiobook for free and wanted to make sure they, they sort of give back, which is awesome, by, by buying the book on Amazon. Um, thank you so much for all the support. Um, this has been a wonderful celebration. Um, I also want to give a shout-out to Jonathan Wandrush, who is uh, sort of the illustrator behind Let Go. A lot of you have seen some of the artwork in Let Go. Um, I don't actually – let me see if I can pull this up. I want to show this to you guys. I had this made because this the art, artwork was so awesome. So check this out. This is a canvas that has all of the little artwork pieces from Let Go, and uh, this is uh, going to go up on my wall. So it's going to be awesome. Um, just thank you, Jonathan, for, for your creative artwork and, and everything you're doing, and I'm working with each of these people uh, on, on more product in the future. I can't express how thankful I am for them. So thank you, team. Um, and also the Snippet app team, of, of course, which is where I first published Let Go. Um, you know, they're doing amazing things. The, my team and I went up to San Francisco a couple weeks ago and met with the Snippet app team. They got some amazing things going on. I can't wait to see, um, you know, how it works out. And, and uh, you know, it's making me want to publish again on Snippet app. So um, definitely check out the snippetapp.com for that. Um, let's see. Five minutes left. What should we do? Should I have another, another giveaway? I think we should do... Another giveaway. We'll, we'll, this will be a giveaway to, um, to to some of you who who, who have you know uh, generously shared your Let Go story. Um, so this Let Go story, uh, the second one I think we've, we've done today, is from S. Kern Ramsdell. S. Kern Ramsdell, and uh, this person said, Pat, I was hurt in the first Gulf War, which left me unable to carry on with too much of my trade. For years, I odd jobbed and then was laid up with amazing pain from injury. A decade of substance abuse almost finished me. 
Now I have Pat Flynn teach me how to provide for my new family with passive income. I work when I can, and the money comes round the clock and as we sleep. How can I ever say thank you enough? That was enough right there, uh, Kern. Just uh, thank you so much for serving and, and, and sharing your story. Um, congratulations. Let's, let's send Kern a $20 iTunes gift card. Um, so we'll connect with you in a second one way or another, Kern. Thank you. A um, couple people in the stream saying, give me a gift. Uh, I wish I could give one to everyone. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so actually there's another story. Let, let's share another story. Let's just give away a few more things here as much as we can in the next three minutes. Uh, this one is from uh, Molly Mahoney. So Molly Mahoney, congratulations. We'll give you a $20 Amazon gift card. Um, and this, uh, Molly said, up until about a month or two ago, I was really happy but feeling unfocused and therefore unfulfilled work-wise. Your website, podcast, blog, etc., has helped me to pull everything together, and I've never been more excited about a project. I'll be announcing my new website as a prepared performer later this week, and I can't wait to use all you taught me to share my passion with my students and new students who find us through the site. I really can't thank you enough for helping me focus either, or uh, helping me focus after I made the choice to let go four years ago. Yahoo! Awesome. Thank you, Molly. Congratulations to you. Um, this is awesome. I can't wait to go back and see some of the new stories that have been shared. Um, I'll reach you. I'll reach out to a few of you and just you know randomly give away. Maybe 100. This, this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna randomly give away five. Um, you know, and you have to the end of day, end of end of the day to do this. Um, but if you go to smartpassiveincome.com on the latest blog post about let go day, uh, I'm gonna give away five more $20 Amazon gift cards. Uh, okay. So I guess I was gone for a second. Um, let's see. Let me go see that in here. Um, Pat, you changed my life. Story is exactly the same. As yours right now, when you got like, oh, I'm about to be married soon to you, are a constant reminder that knowledge plus hard work equals wealth. Yes, hard work, but also smart work, too. I want to make sure to make that distinction. I mean, a lot of people oh, work hard and not on the right thing. So I would really make sure, this is, this is probably the final tip of, piece of advice I'm going to give you, is that whatever you're working on, you know, check, your, check with yourself every once in a while and see if that is actually something you should be working on. Because I even catch myself sometimes. I work, and I'm working hard, but it's not at the right things. Remember that thing I did on the board here, working on one thing at a time? Make sure you're working hard on that next piece of the puzzle to help you move forward. Um, work hard, of course, you know, hustle, um, but also, you know, just check yourself every once in a while and uh, see if what you're actually doing is actually helping you towards your goal. A lot of us, you know, it's a form of resistance. You know, a lot of us sort of do busy work, um, and it's not necessarily work we should be doing or that's actually helping. So that's just some, one little tip I wanted to give you. Um, for those of you, let's see. Uh, Boston wants you to visit. I want to go to Boston. I love Boston. I was there a couple years ago um, for filming, actually, a movie. Uh, how is your drive for success compared to that of your siblings? Um, I think it's the same. You know, I see it in my children. They are so determined. Even my daughter, who will see a toy across the whole room, and she can't even crawl yet, but she's just really trying, and, and, and then she gets, she gets upset because she really wants it. Um, my son, I mean, he's just, he's just crazy. Uh, and, 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 and he is so enthusiastic and, uh, about the smallest things, too. And I think the thing I learned from him, really, is focusing on the small wins along the way. There are a lot of things that he does that wouldn't seem like worth celebrating, and he totally goes crazy celebrating them from putting on his shoes the right way, you know, M making sure it's left foot, right foot, and he does that right. I mean, that alone, just he gets so excited about. And I think if we all just enjoyed the little wins a little bit more, we would be that much more happy in life. And more motivated. So, great, uh, great question. Um, I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think it's time for the grand prize. Um, and so we're going to give away one of these, one of these 118 scale DeLoreans from Back to the Future 2, because the, the 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 wheels pop up like that, which is awesome. Inside the gold wings, I'm going to put a couple gift cards there for you. Uh, a $20 gift card from Amazon and a $20 gift card from iTunes. Although, actually, no, because my team and I talked about that, and it would, we, we would have to get the ship to us first and then put the gift cards in and ship it out, which would be totally inefficient and a waste of space or a waste of time. Um, so we'll send you one of these, whoever the winner of this next task may be, uh, and, and the cards, $40 worth of, of gift cards. So the gold wings are awesome. I want to just keep these up like this the whole time. And this is in the Macklemore video, right? Their shot. Anyway. 
So I want you to tell me in the chat stream what keeps you going. What keeps you going? And again, I'm going to select someone at random for this grand prize. Unfortunately, it's tough to scroll through each of them. But what keeps you going when you are struggling, when you, when you are, 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 are feeling that doubt and that fear? What is it that keeps you going? What's your motivation in life? What would help you sort of let go from something but keep going forward and knowing that if, even if something drastic were to change, that, that, that you have what it takes to move forward? What keeps you going? So I'm going to read some of these off to finish off, and then I'll, uh, I'll announce the winner. And so the winner should private message Matt, MWG142, under the moderator thing in the chat. Um, my children, my family, uh, inner desire to be great, God and family, absolutely. Um, desire to help, serving people, uh, being a giver, um, doing something I'm passionate about, doing something that makes me happy, my love for my family. Um, knowing that I am strong and loved, absolutely. Vegetarian Zen, love that. Um, Spleenog, needing to make a difference in the world, totally. Serving, making the internet and the world a better place. Um, a good support network, yes, David Michael, again, who, who was previously a winner, um, who, who gets Mozart, right? Uh, yeah, having, having that support group definitely keeps, keeps me going as well. Um, oh, man, I lost it. Um, my fiance. Uh, small wins along the way. Yes, 173212. What's up? Uh, freedom in corporate America. Oh, freedom, freedom from corporate America. Uh, that was CMGSWG. Um, saying what if in four years. I think that's an important one. 559750. You know, do you really want to live thinking the what if? Um, you know, what if you've done this or what if you've done that? Uh, the best thing to do is at least say, you know, oh well, meaning you gave it a shot. Um, I don't want to live with what if either. Uh, happiness for all, being free, um, success, Prozac, okay? Uh, model, modeling integrity, stick to itiveness, and passion for my 11-year-old son, Annie Keeling, very nice. Um, Sam Davis Hudson, encouraging friends, serving others and being joyous. Uh, that was uh, Rio Michael. Uh, voiceover Michael, maybe? Um, my better half, independence and self-actualization. Okay, I'm going to pick one at these at random. I'm going to actually just roll through this whole thing, pick them all up, copy, paste them somewhere, and just pinpoint one. So the grand prize winner, the winner of the 118th scale DeLorean, along with a $20 Amazon gift card and a $20 iTunes gift card, uh, will be Fantasy Sports Brain, Faith, Family, Friends, fortune in the right order. Love it. Love that. And again, I was per that person was selected at random. Uh, but congratulations, fantasy, fantasy sports brain. Make sure you private message Matt so we can get your information. Um, congratulations. Whew. We're done. Woohoo. Dude, you guys are awesome. Like, seriously. So to recap the guests we had on really quick, so you make sure that you can go visit them too because they are amazing people. Lewis House from Lewis house.com, L-E-W-I-S-H-E-W-E-S. -E -E I wonder if I can write these on the board and you can even see them. Um, and then we have Cliff Ravenscraft from podcastanswerman.com. So I will just write really big here, Lewis House in the house .com. And then uh, you can find Cliff at podcast answer man oh man the pen's running out because I'm holding it down okay podcastanswerman.com hopefully you guys can see that uh, it's kind of light well I said it a bunch of, a bunch of times um, and so you know this is actually going to be you know if you if you caught this late and you want to catch the beginning, beginning of this the interviews with Lewis um, and Cliff this will be, it, or it has been recorded. It'll be shown on the replay at letgoday.com. So this will be here alive uh, for good. And, um, you know, if you wanted to support the message even more, just feel free to share Let Go Day. Even after the broadcast, that replay will be there and, and the stream and, and um, you know, the, the, the Twitter hashtag stream as well. Um, use the hashtag today. Um, and, and really just every time in the future you come up to a hard sort of moment in life, just I hope you can think of this. Um, not me, but just the idea of, of the fact that, you know, 
something that was so drastic in my life, something that changed it and seemed like the worst thing possible actually turned out to be the best thing ever. Um, and so life is really 10% what happens to you and 90% what you make of it. So make something out of, out of what happens, um, whatever it may be. So those are my last final words of wisdom. Um, thank you guys so much for your attention and, and, and just let me know what you think of this. Uh, if you feel like I should be doing this more, if you even just, not for a holiday, like let go day, but just more uh, Q&A. I mean, this, this has been really fun for me. Um, so just tweet me at Pat Flynn and use the hashtag let go day. Um, I'll give it another hour for you to use let go day from this point forward so I can go in and, and find somebody to give an Amazon um, gift card to. Um, but, yeah, thank you guys so much. I mean, you guys are fantastic. Uh, let me see what's being said here. Let us know your results from this day. Mommy loves says that. Yes, totally. I mean, obviously, this was a big day to celebrate the idea of letting go. Um, but, you know, obviously, it was a way to sort of push let go and get more ranking or get more reviews and higher rankings at the same time. And I hope you had fun and could sort of learn from this example and just the power of what, it, what happens when you build a community like this and you sort of give to them. Um, you always will get back uh, things in return. Um, uh, David Michael, awesome. He said, thanks, Pat. We'll use my Amazon card to purchase one of the books mentioned in the broadcast, Rework, um, which is totally an awesome book. I recommend it. Actually, it's, it's nice because each chapter, it's not really chapters, it's just each idea is just a page or two long, and they're really good, digestible little tiny things, and they come with really interesting um, images. This one's like focus on you instead of they. Um, really good stuff. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Download the audio book. Um, I don't know what else, what else to say. I feel like I should just stick around as, as long as people are here. Um, maybe answer a few more questions. I don't know. What do you think, Mindy? It's time with Pat. I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe for seven more minutes until until the fifth, uh, until the quarter hour, uh, quarter of the hour. So, yes, I like this. You streamer three six six one eight eight said, "Screw we work, get let go." You should get both because both are awesome, I think. Um, uh, Pat, what was the first book you talked about? Uh, this is from Polly Lass with the resistance thing and all that. It's Stephen Pressfield, The War of Art, which I love because it's like The Art of War by Sun Tzu, but it's The War of Art, and it's definitely a war between you and your brain when you're trying to be creative. So definitely check that book out. I will mention that there are some, you know, maybe not – Oh, I mean, um, there, there are some – Swear words and stuff, which I don't know if bothers you, um, but it, it, I wouldn't read those words to to my son, but I would read all the other words in there. So just giving you a warning in case you were to give it to a little kid. Um, Chris Murphy said, "Pat, how are those headphones? These headphones are great. Um, they are the 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 Beats, which are like um, you know the giant ones, but they're 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 headphones or they they're, they plug in your ears. But they're pretty good." Um, Time for you and your family to go to Disney World in Orlando. Let me know if you get here. That's by Unistreamer371802. Actually, uh, we're going on a Disney cruise, which is coming out of Orlando, I believe. We're going to go to Harry Potter World later in the year, and then from there, we're going to Disney Cruise for a week. And uh, I'm so excited about that. I'm a Disney freak just as much as any other Disney freak. Um, this is awesome. Uh, Let Go is number one on Amazon and Web 2.0 category right now. Awesome. That's so cool. Like, that is, that is awesome. And again, you know, as much as I was trying to get the rankings up, this is more about you guys and more about um, just, just spreading the word of let go. Um, and I know that the more we could do that, obviously, the, as a, a nice byproduct is, is the fact that it will climb higher in, in, in Amazon, um, which is awesome. Uh, let's see. Someone asks, what ship are you on, Pat? Oh, that's for the – I used to work for Disney Cruise. I, I don't know what ship we're on. I have to, check, I have to look that up. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, have you ever attended any motivational events like Tony Robbins, and would you recommend any of them? Uh, I haven't, actually. I haven't done any conferences. My first one was the one in 2010 at Blog World Expo in Las Vegas. That was my very first experience being at any sort of conference like that. Um, as far as a motivational one, um, I haven't been to one that's specifically motiv motivational. A lot of the ones I've been to are, you know, blogger-related or social media-related but there's a lot of motivational material in those presentations, and, and I love that kind of stuff. Um, I would definitely recommend it, um, you know, Awake the Giant Within type stuff. Um, and, and Tony Robbins has, has great inspirational sort of messages, and, and, and you know, he, he definitely has authority in his, in his role and what he says. So if, if that's something you need in order to get stuff done, uh, do it. 
uh, how far am I running these days? What's your average pace? Huh. So I've been training for a half marathon. Um, I got to a point where, now, where I was running about 10 miles on my long days. It switches up. I do a lot of uh, sort of, um, you know, interval type stuff in the midweek. And then at the end of the week, I do my sort of long sort of endurance run. Unfortunately, I may have pushed myself a little too hard. I got shin splints on my right leg. And um, it's just I couldn't walk. I couldn't even go up the stairs anymore. It was ridiculous. And uh, then I got sick. And for some reason, my entire family got sick at the same time, and that just held me back. So I haven't done any long runs for about three weeks now, which I, I feel cruddy about that. But I have been doing push-ups, um, and, and I have been going to the gym a little bit and, and doing the elliptical and doing some bicycling. That was weird. I never say it like that before. I never said it like that before, bicycling. But um, bicycling, that was weird. Anyway, um, so I'm going to try and get back into it. My goal is to complete a half marathon in August that, I, that I'm scheduled for um, in under two hours. So we'll see how that happens. Um, let's see. Posting a review of your book on my site shortly. Thank you, Chris. That's awesome. Um, hey, Pat, would you ever be – oh, gosh, where'd it go? I think it was about doing a meetup in Temecula. I mean, I wanted to do more live meetups. I mean, they're the best thing ever, just connecting with people um, and 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 – being someone who can connect other people together, I think I'm in that fortunate position where I can make that happen. And whenever I go to public speaking events, um, you know, I, I, I organize a meetup, and you know, people are talking with each other more than they're talking more than they're talking to me, and I love that. And so many partnerships have been formed and things like that as a result. Um, how do you? Uh, let's see. Uh, isn't it surreal having so many people know about and ask about your personal life? Um, that's a great question, and it is surreal a little bit because I think we're just not used to that. And, you know, I know that I share stuff on the web, so I know that people have to know about me. Um, but it's really cool. I mean, sometimes I meet people for the first time, and, you know, they, they, they're pulling out this information that I've shared before, but I forgot that I've shared, and, and it's just – it's really cool. Um, it just speaks to how – awesome the time we live in where we can create these real connections with people um, you know halfway around the world um, with multiple people at the same time and that's why I love podcasting more than anything you can create these almost what seems like one-on-one -on -one conversations with people because they're they're plugged they're plugging you into their brain and they're not listening to anything else and you're speaking to them um, but it happens with multiple people at the same time and I just love that uh, let's see over 2,000 people have viewed this by now that's awesome that's awesome I wish I knew what I could do better to keep people on, to keep all 2K people on the whole time. Um, hi, Pat. Longtime reader. I recently quit my productivity blog to follow my passion of music. I'm just worried about the monetary return. Well, if you listen to the interview I talked about with Cliff earlier, it takes a long time to get to that point. But I think um, the more you can serve and provide, the more you can get back in return. And when it comes to music, you know, it's tough to make, to make money from your actual music. I mean, um, you know, there are ways to do that, and there are a lot of you know, really talented artists who are, who are doing that, um, whether it's by doing covers and putting them on YouTube. I, I follow a lot of people who do covers and put them on YouTube, and they make money through licensing of, of the of songs. Um, and then they come out with their own songs and albums, too. Um, but I, I think there's definitely something to be said for the education of music. And if you have an interesting way or some sort of innovative te technique to share how to learn something better than what's out there, then, then totally – go for it. Um, or maybe it's some sort of software. I know there's a software I used back in the day that was so helpful that I paid for called Sibelius, which helped me write music for um, my people when I was in the marching band or for, for the students who were in the marching band uh, with me when I was student director. A um, couple last questions uh, from Ustreamer366188. Would you say Tim Ferriss is your mentor or coach idol? I definitely say he's a mentor, sort of unofficial mentor. But I mean, I have his book right here. I have... Um, I have all these other books. Uh, oh, dude, i got to show you this book from another mentor of mine that I'm trying to reach here. Um, this, is a, this is a book by um, Seth Godin, and a lot of you know his books, like Tribe and um, Purple Cow. But this is a book I got from him, which is amazing because it's huge. Um, it's just incredible what is in this book. I mean, there, there's just, like, really cool. This is called This Might Not Work. And I got it off of this Kickstarter campaign for the Icarus Deception. Um, but there's some really cool stuff in here. Um, I'm probably making a bunch of noise with my mic right now, but 
uh, really cool, sort of inspirational, sort of almost like Let Go, you know, stories. And um, he added some pictures from people in the Kickstarter campaign. Um, here's one. I'm trying to read this backwards. So here's the question. When you're gone, will they miss what you do? Love that. Okay. I'm going to put this down, and I just have to say, I like how I did that. I just have to say, I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. If you wanted to get let go on Amazon, I would appreciate it so much. If you wanted to leave a review, even better. Again, you don't have to purchase your, uh, the book on Amazon to um, leave a review for let go. But it, it, it's a store that means a lot to me because it's changed my life, and I know it could change a lot of other people's lives too. So thank you. I'm going to sign off. Um, you guys are amazing, seriously. Um, I guess before I, I, I finish off, I just want to mention that I'm working on something for the next upcoming only72.com sale, uh, which is coming in a couple weeks. You'll see more information about that on Smart Passive Income. But I'm working on something really cool because I am going to be a part of that sale, um, sort of the first product that I'm actually doing. And, and so look out for that. That's going to be awesome. Um, if there's anything I could do for you, let me know. Again, let me know if you enjoyed these live streaming things. Um, and, and give me a shout out on Twitter because uh, you guys are awesome. All right, let me just see what other people are saying. We love you, Pat. Um, dang, like, I don't want to leave. Is, is that bad? Like, ah, we'll, we'll, we'll save the conversations for the next one. Um, I apologize I couldn't get to everybody's, um, but you rock. Um, you guys rock. That's all I got to say. So I don't even know how to end this. I'm just going to be like, I'm going to keep saying you're awesome until somebody boots me out. Okay, kick me off in, in 10 seconds.